It's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. We are following two big stories for you on this Tuesday night. First, the devastating news that the body of a missing Fort Valley University student, Fort Valley State University student from Atlanta has been found. Coming up in a few minutes, we are breaking down what we have learned from investigators over the course of the last few hours. But we begin with weather. We've been talking a lot about weather over the last five or six weeks. And we are weather aware tonight, tracking showers and storms that are popping up all across Metro Atlanta. Meteorologist Samantha Moore has been tracking the system, dumping more rain onto ground that's already soggy out there, Sam. Yeah, that flood risk just continues to rise as we're seeing this rain just kind of stretched across the Atlanta metro area. You can see right now the heaviest of the rain is stretching from Troop County on up towards Athens. And we're seeing just widespread rain all across North Georgia right now with the strongest of the storms here. Just approaching 85, uh, not far from Peachtree City, stretching down th through northern Troop County. And that's where we've had some wind gusts of around 40 miles per hour with some of these thunderstorms and some frequent lightning. So I think this is the most energized line we are seeing right now. And this extends well back into Alabama, into Mississippi, Louisiana. So until all of this moisture gets pushed out of here, we are going to be unsettled. So the Storm Prediction Center has chiseled away a bit at that marginal risk area, taking Floyd County out of it, Daresville out of it, uh, Cartersville out of the marginal risk for severe, just general thunderstorms for them at this point, with the strongest storms really being south of I-20 now as that line moves through. So damaging wind gusts, hail, and flash flooding uh, potential uh, with this particular line and in the overnight hours as well into the early morning. But it is that flood risk we're most concerned about. As you say, it has been such a wet several weeks here, really since the beginning of the year, but particularly in February where we're just well above average. The ground is super saturated. So any, any rain that we get will run off and it's running off through people's yards. It's running off and we're seeing some flooding at Big Creek. We have Big Creek flood warning in place right now. And you can see that the heaviest amounts will be coming down, we think, on the south side, not just tonight, but also tomorrow night and into early Thursday. That will be the focus of the heaviest of the rain, but everyone is going to pick up probably another inch of rain before all is said and done. And you can see right now, this is our future radar, where it will be raining the heaviest the next few hours. And then into that morning commute will go with still a few showers around, but we may get a little lull in the action and just be more showery as we head into our Wednesday. And then we'll end up seeing the heavier rain move in tomorrow night and the really cold air moving in behind that. And that could mean some wintry weather for some. We'll have the details on that coming up. 
Sam, thank you. Tonight, the investigation into a missing Fort Valley State University student has taken a tragic turn. Investigators have found a body this afternoon that they believe is that of Anitra Gunn. The Westlake High School graduate has been missing since Valentine's Day on Friday. 11 Alive Chanu Her is following the story for us tonight. Yeah, guys, members of the task force that was specifically created for this case found that body today a little before 3.30 in Crawford County near the Peach County line. Now, the body was found in the woods about 150 yards from the road. Now, yesterday, the Peach County Sheriff released this photo of Anitra Gunn's car. He says because of the sticks and bushes stuck to the car, they were able to narrow down an area. Sheriff Terry D says when they found the body, it was covered with sticks and limbs as if someone was trying to hide the body. Right now, Sheriff D says they're not ruling it a homicide and not saying the cause of death, but they do have a person of interest. I think it's pretty common sense who our person of interest is. Can you say it and though out loud? Uh, it's the boyfriend. I mean, we've talked to him three times. Now, to be clear, Gunn's boyfriend has not been arrested. The body is now with the GBI, and I did also reach out to Anitra Gunn's father, Christopher Gunn, but have not heard back. All right, Chanu, thank you for the latest on this case, including a full timeline. Look for the article on the As Seen on TV section of our 11 Alive News app. Tonight, new details in another missing persons case, also with a tragic ending. Today, officials released more information about the final hours in the life of six-year-old Faye Swetlick, including the cause of death. Jacob Reynolds from our sister station in Columbia, South Carolina, has the details of tonight's newest information. Casey Department of Public Safety says it was a polka dot boot and a ladle that led to the discovery of six-year-old Faye Swetlick last Thursday. Director Byron Snellgrove with the Casey Department of Public Safety said it was just after 10 a.m. in a trash can they discovered a polka dot boot they believe belonged to Faye Swetlick and then a ladle covered in dirt and he said he operated on a hunch and went to search that immediate area when he found the body. I called for assistance to do an additional and immediate grid search of the areas directly behind Londonderry and Piccadilly Square. As assistance was coming, I went into the woods behind the townhomes, and just before 10.30 a.m., I located the body of face wet. At approximately 10.30, other KC officers were notified of a residence that there was a man bleeding on the back patio. That was 602 Piccadilly Square. Officers immediately went to his aid and found a deceased white male. Immediately, SLED's crime scene unit collected various samples of DNA from both crime scenes and from inside 602 Piccadilly Square. That DNA, once tested, connected the unknown pieces of this horrific crime. I can tell you that the deceased male had been contacted and interviewed at 602 Piccadilly on Wednesday afternoon. He was cooperative and gave consent to agents to look through the house. Those agents did not see anything that alerted them to believe that he had knowledge or was in any way involved in Faye's disappearance at that time. Evidence leads us to believe that the deceased abducted and killed six-year-old Faye Marie Swetlick. And it appears that he is the sole perpetrator of this crime. Evidence further shows that Faye's body was moved in the shadow of the night to behind the townhouses where she was found in the early morning hours on Thursday morning under the cover of darkness. Coroner Margaret Fisher did rule Faye Swetlick's death a homicide, saying she died by asphyxiation in a press release a little bit later on Tuesday. They ruled that Cody Taylor, that deceased male they believed to be responsible, died by suicide. Now, law enforcement did say they had talked to Taylor, they had interviewed him, they had searched the home, nothing to believe that Faye Swetlick was there. Director Snellgrove was asked about that later, and he said they're still not sure where exactly Swetlick was being held from Monday night through Thursday when her body was found. They also talked about all that surveillance tape that came in and they said they do have some video of Cody Taylor on that tape that they now believe uh, he was acting sus suspiciously. When we asked Director Snellgrove to elaborate on that, he said he could not give details of that suspicious behavior, but they did have video of Taylor from last week.
Well, we have today's full 24-minute news conference posted right now on 11alive.com and in the 11 Alive news app in the As Seen on TV section. Georgia lawmakers today restored some cuts proposed by Governor Kemp as the state deals with a budget shortfall. It's been a contentious issue among Republican leaders. Doug Richards takes a look at where it stands. The state is cutting its budget because lawmakers passed a tax cut two years ago and state revenues fell short. How to handle that has been a contentious issue among Republican leaders here at the Capitol. The GBI crime lab has become one of the touchstones in the dispute. Governor Kemp proposed cutting $1.6 million, reducing positions for scientists and lab techs this year and even more scientists and lab techs next year while struggling to eliminate a sizable case backlog that includes hundreds of untested rape kits. Many lawmakers said the cuts were unacceptable. The House Appropriations Committee mostly agreed. It shouldn't be a backlog anymore. You cut this budget, yeah, I think you run afoul of the truth when you start saying we'll be able to do it with these budget cuts. The House Committee also restored many cuts proposed in substance abuse treatment programs, mental health programs, and accountability courts, which are designed to reduce the state's cost of incarcerating criminals. The committee chairman says those short-term savings were also ill-advised. They went on to prison or went on through the criminal justice system. So you're looking at spending a dollar or spending seven dollars. It makes that a pretty easy decision. You can't cut behavioral health and realize that some of the crisis hotlines are not going to have people to actually man those lines. There are two budgets. The one restoring the cuts from this year's budget will likely get a vote in the House Wednesday. Next year's budget, with even more cuts, is still a work in progress. And that's the budget in which Governor Kemp wants to add another round of teacher pay raises. We're going to have more on how voters feel about the teacher pay raise and how they want the state to pay for them. That is still to come in prime time. Investigators are trying to figure out what caused a deadly house fire in Decatur this afternoon. DeKalb County Fire and Rescue was called to the house on Troy Cove Road about 2 p.m. When they arrived, they were told someone was still inside, but by that time, about a quarter of the house was engulfed by flames. It took them hours to get that fire under control. The name of the woman who died has not yet been released. So to come, the coronavirus impacting more now than just health. It's also taking a surprising toll on the wedding industry. I'll tell you how next. And don't forget, we're streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can subscribe and join in on the conversation. In the community section, we have more 11 Alive news in prime time coming up right after the break. Stay with us. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up. Some 160 Americans who have arrived back in the U.S. after being evacuated from China are no longer quarantined for their potential exposure to coronavirus. 
buses full of Americans left two military bases in California. They were aboard the first of two planes evacuated from the center of the outbreak in Wuhan, China. Another group of Americans is also expected to be released from quarantine on Thursday. In China, the virus continues to take its toll. Over the past 24 hours, there have been more than 1,800 new confirmed cases, bringing the total to right around 73,000. So far, more than 1,800 people have died. China's foreign ministry says the government is making an all-out effort to counter the outbreak. The coronavirus isn't just impacting health, though. The pain is now being felt in an unlikely industry. We're talking about weddings. Uh, many bridal designers operate out of China, and due to ongoing quarantine, some factories have been forced to shut down. That means big shipping delays. Some designers say they won't be able to ship out dresses until the middle of the summer. It's an extra layer of stress that no one could have expected. I do have dresses that are out there waiting to be fulfilled, so I'm, I'm nervous about being sure that my gowns will be able to get here in time. This is a bride's wedding day, and if they fell in love with a dress, you don't want to be that person to say, I'm sorry, you know, we can't get that for you. So I just very cautious. The good news that most of the factories are expected to open soon if they haven't already, but we could be feeling the impacts for months to come. So if you're ordering something special, it might be a good idea to have a backup plan. Remember, we are keeping you updated on all things related to the coronavirus outbreak. You can download the 11 Alive app to find out more about symptoms and confirmed cases here in the United States. We're watching that rain just stream on in, just this huge line of moisture across the state right now, especially the South Metro at the moment, with quite a few strikes of lightning in the past hour or so. We've had over a dozen here in the Peachtree City area, and you can see where it is really coming down right now. Now, just three in the last 15 minutes in terms of lightning strikes, but it was a little bit more active as it came through Noonan and entered Peachtree City, where it's right over and right now stretching over to McDonough. And the rainfall amounts have been adding up. In fact, so far today alone, we've had over two inches in some spots, like near Adairsville. We've had Oh, about an inch and a half north of Roswell and near Peachtree City on the south side here, uh, almost three inches of rain. So we're definitely seeing some decent rainfall amounts. And that's, of course, leading to those fears about flooding and flash flooding. And this moisture will continue to stream in all night long. It extends all the way back across Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, all the way back into Texas where we have a frontal system that's going to usher in some very chilly air once we get to the end of the week. Temperatures should be around 15 to 20 degrees colder than we were today. So the big chill is returning. Looking down at noon and look at this. You can see this light. The rain is just pouring off of that street light here. The streets, of course, are just uh, soggy with waters, a lot of ponding on the roadways and rivers running through yards. Now this is in Brookhaven from earlier this afternoon where Linda Schuss, uh, Lisa Schuss, excuse me, uh, posted this picture, one of our 11 and Live storm trackers. And she said her yard's just becoming a river here. So we have many 11 and Live storm trackers have been saying the exact same thing as the ground is saturated and there's just nowhere for this rain to go. So temperatures are going to be much colder as we head into uh, the end of the week. We're going to see wintry temperatures returning. Uh, 62 is our high today, 51 our low, but we will be running at least 15 to 20 degrees colder than that by the end of the week. Normals this time of year are 57 and 38. And by the way, the rainfall amounts so far today, almost an inch and a half. So the rainfall amounts continue to rise. We are over eight inches ahead for the year, 8.21 inches ahead of where we should be. So rain is going to continue all night long tonight. It'll be pretty continuous in most spots and we could likely hear the thunder rumbling as well. And then tomorrow, I think we'll have some breaks in the action. It won't be as soggy as it was today, but we'll still have intermittent showers out there and then another wave of heavy rain coming our way tomorrow night. So tonight we'll have the overnight downpours and thunderstorms off and on showers on Wednesday. So a little bit of a break in the action. You may be able to get a, an hour or two in without seeing a shower. And then as we get into the late evening overnight, more heavy rain and then very cold 
So where the cold air interacts with some of that moisture, we may see some wintry weather starting to form. So as far as what we're expecting tonight, that rain continuing to be heavy at times as we head through the overnight hours. Tomorrow morning's commute, just a few showers out there. Most of the heaviest stuff should be off to the east, but it still will be gray. It'll be drizzly and showery in some spots and then off and on light showers throughout the day. So the afternoon isn't a total washout, but then the washout returns by midnight tomorrow night and into Thursday morning. We'll see that widespread rain moving in again. This time it looks like the focus may be a little further south, but still everyone's going to get more rain tomorrow night uh, with the brunt of the flooding rain, maybe aimed just a little bit more towards our lower uh, southern half of our metro area. And what's this? Well, this is the wintry precip we were talking about. Early on Thursday, we may see that transition in our northeasternly, northeastern counties, Rabin County, Union County, Towns County, uh, possibly as we head into the afternoon and evening hours. Everyone else is going to see a cold rain and it's going to taper off and it's going to be very, very chilly as the skies start to clear. So right now, this is the GFS. The models, of course, not in complete agreement here, but the GFS is showing some of that moisture getting down and will likely have a little freezing rain before this transitions over to possibly a little sleet, some snow pellets over to snow as we head into our Thursday evening. So right now, the only accumulations will occur in the highest elevations and far North Georgia. We're not expecting any impacts here in the Atlanta metro area, although our northern suburbs may see a few flakes fly and we'll also be on the lookout for some slick spots on the roadways. Uh, just in case we'll monitor those road temperatures for you. So 60% chance of rain on our oh, on our Wednesday, 80% chance on Thursday. And then by the time we get to Friday, things are going to be really cold and clear as we head into our Friday and Saturday below freezing on our Saturday with some very chilly temps for the start of the weekend. And then it looks like mostly dry on Sunday. Rain moves in late with more rain next week. All right, some sports news to pass along here. Something to plan ahead for. Georgia and Clemson will open the 2021 football season coming up uh, in Charlotte. But we're going to begin with a little bit of baseball, first of all. A lot of baseball. Everybody has been talking about the Astros, and rightfully so. I don't know anyone who doesn't really have an opinion on this subject. And generally, it runs against the Astros. And spring training normally is a time of optimism. But the cheating scandal has been something that has overshadowed so much with his signed stealing scheme. While the Astros fired their general manager and manager, the players themselves faced no discipline. And that does not sit very well with a lot of players, including the Braves outfielder Nick Markakis. He did not hold back when asked about the scheme, the scam, whatever you want to call it, and Major League Baseball's response. You know, what they did was bull****. Um, you know, they take a lot of uh, opportunities away from people and, uh, you know, possibly ruin people's careers. And, uh, you know, like I said, we're all competitive in this and, you know, we want to compete and win. But when you take it to that level, I mean, there's no excuse. It's, uh, like I said, bull****. And, you know, they should, uh, they should have some uh, ramification on what they did. Yeah, a lot of those boop, 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 a lot of those expletive kinds of, kind of words in there. But he also said they deserve a beating. We'll have more from Mark Agus coming up as he spoke about this topic and the Houston Astros players and the commissioner of baseball. You can hear more of those comments about giving them a beating on 11alive.com. Well, the news is still good for NASCAR driver Ryan Newman. 24 hours ago, we were talking about the horrific crash he was in at Daytona. The Roush Fenway Racing Team released a statement saying, that Newman is awake, speaking with doctors and his family. It's been a little more than 24 hours again since that crash. Newman was taken to Halifax Hospital. That's in Daytona Beach. That's where he is tonight. We really don't know anything other than that, that he is awake and he is talking and he is not in condition that is life-threatening. The race team also thanked fans for the concern and the messages of support. All right, I talked about this momentarily, and, and we want to focus on it for a moment now. As we look at Mr. Smart and his Georgia football team, there's some news today that the 2021 football season will open with a game in Charlotte. It will take place on Saturday, September 4th, and that is going to be something about a year and a half away at the Bank of America Stadium, home of the Carolina Panthers. But Clemson and Georgia together in the Carolinas, 
North Carolina. Man, oh man, that is going to be a night to savor, Jennifer. Smells like recruiting to me, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Travelers hear her voice all the time, but do you know who she is? Next, we're going to introduce you to the voice of the train at the world's busiest airport. Go to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I You're consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Jess. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. right, right. about I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin. Well, you've heard it before. We've got the busiest airport in the world here. And if you've traveled even just once through Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, you have probably been welcomed aboard the plane train. But just who is behind that voice, be as in Bravo, a great, wonderful voice that you hear while riding. Liza Lucas takes a trip to find out who it is. Every day, over 250,000 excited, exhausted, and even on edge travelers rely on this voice. Welcome aboard the plane train. To guide them to their gates. The next stop is for tea gates. And the woman behind that reassuring voice, Atlanta resident Sharon Feingold. It's so, sorry. I'm like, when I hear the voice, I'm like, I can't, I can't focus. I know, but I'm like, it's, com <laughs> it's like hearing like an echo of your own voice. Believe it or not, the journey to becoming voice of the plane train all started on an airplane. I happened to be on an airplane and was reading and there was a whole article about this whole infrastructure down here and there was the name of a, a guy. I thought well let me just reach out to him and just see if he has any plans to do anything with the boys. And of course Sharon wanted to make sure her plane train announcements were anything but plain. This is a driverless train. People want to feel confident in technology. And so I felt like splitting the difference between a real person and having a little bit of a robot edge was the kind of right combination. No way. That it takes a second, right, for people to make the connection. Welcome aboard the plane train. How often have you heard this lady before? Oh, I hear her every day. Every day? Every day for the last two years. Well, I have to introduce you over here. This, this is all right. Oh. Whether or not riders made the connection between Sharon's voice and the plane train is up in the air. But the role is nevertheless a special one for Sharon. What's your name? Del Reese. The next stop is Concourse D. D is in Del Reese. And before we wrapped up our own ride on the plane train, we had to put the voice of the train to the test with an 11 Alive WXIA TV sign off. The next stop is Concourse W. W as in WXIA. Please hold on. This train is departing. 
She's good. Wow, what a voice that is. A gift. It is a gift. Coming up, we have an update on the continued search for a missing hiker out of Dawson County. Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they are fun. And they're, they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel like thing. we have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive, amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man. Hank. Well, we're looking at more heavy rain that's going to be moving in as we head into the overnight hours. In fact, you can see some very heavy rain here, stretching from Troop County into Coweta County and then on up towards Athens, where we have some heavy downpours. We've also had some frequent lightning, and this has been a very fast moving line. So along with it, some gusty winds as it blows on through town. So definitely more concerns about flooding. The lightning has since uh, kind of wrapped up for now anyway. Way, but still we have plenty of lightning out to our west in Alabama that could move in. So we are not out of the woods in terms of thunderstorms yet as this line of rain extends well back into Texas and we're still seeing a lot of lightning activity across Alabama right now. So flooding is the main concern as it has been the last few weeks. Uh, we'll get another one to two inches of rain as we head through tomorrow and then more rain tomorrow night as we get into early Thursday morning. So two more waves of rain still to come before we finally start to dry out. So we're going to be very wet as we head into the next several hours overnight and into that morning commute, although it will lighten up for the morning commute. I think it'll be more showery in nature, but there's likely to be standing road on standing water on some of the roadways in these flood prone spots have been dealing with all this heavy rain all evening long and then we'll continue to see the showers tomorrow before the next wave of heavy rain moves in. So rainfall amounts looking like this by the time we get to tomorrow evening, 
easily at half an inch to an inch and a half here from about I-20 southward. A little lighter this time around in North Georgia, just because the focus of the moisture is going to be a little further south. But in that next wave, which is going to move in Wednesday night into Thursday morning, everyone will get another half an inch to an inch and a half. So overnight downpours and thunderstorms are likely. It'll lighten up tomorrow, so all of tomorrow will not be a wash, but we will have off and on showers. Then more rain overnight tomorrow night into Thursday morning, and then very cold temperatures, some 15 to 20 degrees colder than we were today. That means temperatures in the afternoon on Friday are going to be in the mid 40s for much of the afternoon with some gusty winds. It is going to feel like the big chill has returned. So coming up, we'll talk more about the timing on that and who may see some wintry weather once we get into Thursday afternoon and evening. All right, Sam, thank you. Rescue crews are still looking for a missing hiker in Dawson County. Eddie Noonkeister lost his way while hiking along mm. the Appalachian Trail on Friday. Deputies say he managed to make a distress call, but so far oh. rescue crews were only able to locate some of his belongings. Officials fear that heavy, ra heavy rain could be impacting the search. With the uh, possibility of winter weather moving in uh, and being exposed to the elements, uh, you know, our priority is to try to find him in these next 48 hours. At the same time, deputies do say that there are no signs of foul play. That is such a sad story. Police have released a photo of the man they say walked into a restaurant on Valentine's Day and then shot three people. Investigators say the man walked into the old lady gang restaurant at Camp Creek Marketplace and then opened fire. He injured three, but they believe only one was the intended target. There is now a $2,000 reward for anybody who may have information about led to the shooting. Real Housewives Atlanta star Candy Burris is a co-owner of the restaurant. She says she is praying for the victim. Safety will be a top concern during the upcoming men's basketball Final Four. Not that far away from being here in Atlanta. Multiple public agencies involved in a preparedness exercise at the Georgia World Congress Center. They discussed ways officials can work together in the event of a public emergency. The Final Four will tip off April 4th inside the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The championship game is then two days later. Fulton County ensuring there are no mistakes when you head to the polls for next month's presidential primary. Today, the county hosted a mock election. Members of the community were able to test the new voting machines. It starts with a familiar touch screen, but now voters must take a, a paper ballot and drop it in a scanner. That is the only way that your vote will be counted. Georgia's presidential primary, March 24th. The last day to register is Monday. Early voting in Fulton County is from March 2nd to March 20th. A mistrial declared in the hacking case against a Gwinnett County judge. The jury hung on whether Catherine Schrader was guilty or innocent of the charges. Schrader was accused of hiring a private investigative team to look through her computer for evidence that someone from the district attorney's office was hacking it. Three other people who were charged in the case all took plea deals in exchange for their testimony during Schrader's trial. A former Gwinnett County police officer on trial for excessive force took the stand to testify today. Robert McDonald is charged with violating his oath as an officer and assaulting a man during a traffic stop. Our Joe Hinkey reports from the courthouse in Gwinnett County where the defense rested its case after McDonald's testimony. Moments before Robert McDonald arrived, then Gwinnett County Police Sergeant Michael Bongiovanni pulled over a driver named Demetrius Hollins. Cell phone video shows Bongiovanni pulling Hollins out of his car and then hitting him in the face. As it relates to that, I heard my sergeant yell he was in a fight over the radio, so hearing he's in a fight over the radio, that probably means somebody's going to get arrested. Bon Giovanni took a plea deal to avoid prison time in this case in exchange for his testimony. Cell phone video shows McDonald then arriving with Hollins on the ground. McDonald says as he ran up with his gun drawn but finger off the trigger, he noticed Hollins on his side and looking back. It was, I was going to run up and use my foot to push his shoulder back down the ground because I still had my weapon in my hand, not knowing if there's other people in the car, if he had a weapon. I don't know what's going on at this point. At this point, McDonald says he missed Hollins' shoulder. And as I was bringing my foot down, he moved, and my foot missed his shoulder and hit him right here on the side of the cheek. At that point, he rolled down the ground, and I looked and saw he was, was indeed handcuffed. McDonald said using his hands to hold down Hollins instead was not an option. I considered it, but considering the fact that I had my pistol in my hands, I didn't want to, at that time, have, possibly have him reach up and grab my gun. McDonald testified he did not press his gun to Holland's head, but he held the gun near it because they were at close range and next to a busy intersection. Um, if, God forbid, you do have to take a shot, 
the bullet's going straight down. It's not going to hit my sergeant or an innocent motorist two cars over. Um, you know where it's going to go. The state, though, questioned McDonald's use of force by pulling his gun and not asking if the man was handcuffed or resisting as he ran up. When you come up, did you think Sergeant Bon Giovanni was in a life or death situation? I didn't know. When asked by the state, McDonald said he didn't see Hollins actively fighting when he arrived and ran up with his gun drawn but was rolling onto his side. McDonald also said at some point the gun did touch Holland's head. We expect to hear closing arguments from attorneys in this case in the morning before the jury begins deliberations. 11 Live is, of course, covering this trial on air and online for you, so be sure to download the 11 Live app for full testimony and any updates in the trial. The upcoming Democratic debate will have a new face this time around. We're talking with Emory Professor Dr. Andra Gillespie about the addition of former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg and what it means for the race going forward. Today, what they mean and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. would wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta. Almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with. Tomorrow's debate in Nevada will be the first time former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg will take the stage to face off against his Democratic rivals, and he will have to address past controversies that are now resurfacing in the headlines. Alice Barr is joining us now with the latest from Washington. Former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, a familiar face in the race to the White House thanks to hundreds of millions in ad spending, will finally bring his voice to the debate stage in Nevada tomorrow night, though his rivals are already trying to drown him out. Anybody here worth $60 billion? You can run for president, and you can buy the airwaves. 
Bloomberg entered the race so late he won't appear on the Nevada ballot, but he qualified for the debate after earning double digits in new polls out today. An NBC News Wall Street Journal poll shows Bernie Sanders pulling ahead into a solid lead, with Joe Biden dropping off sharply and Bloomberg surging into third. Another poll has Sanders and Bloomberg tied for the lead in Virginia, which votes on Super Tuesday in March, the first time Bloomberg will be on the ballot. The other candidates hitting him for his stop-and-frisk policing policy that targeted communities of color during his time as New York mayor. But he can't, in fact, wipe away his record. I know I can't change history, but what I can do is learn from my mistakes. A shifting field, all trying to make a mark in Nevada, where lines are long as early voting wraps up today. We need to draw everybody we can into this coalition. I want to beat Donald Trump, and I need your help to do it. Thank you. President Trump heading west today, too, visiting four states in four days to counter the Democratic contest and foreshadow the true fight ahead. So, as everybody knows, the debate will be key for Mr. Bloomberg as he tries to define his campaign for voters on national television. We asked Emory professor Dr. Andre Gillespie what his strategy could be as he goes up on the big stage. He is emerging as a viable moderate candidate who is perhaps taking advantage of the fact that Joe Biden's candidacy hasn't taken root in the ways that people expected. Um, and he's also banking on the fact that Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar may not do as well in the upcoming states as they did in Iowa and in New Hampshire. And so he wants to present himself as his viable third choice. But it's yet an unvetted choice. So he hasn't had to go through the rigors of um, standing up against his competitors and actually explaining in real time why he's a better option. So we're going to learn a lot in the next 100 days. You know, there is a long way to go, but quite frankly, you look at the calendar and by early June, we have probably a pretty good sense of all of this. Dr. Gillespie says it will be just as important to watch how candidates who've already been on the debate stage perform. Joe Biden performs well, um, you know, then perhaps it lends credence to his argument that he was destined to do poorly in Iowa and New Hampshire, and that the greater test should be how well he does um, amongst my, uh, more diverse populations in Nevada and in South Carolina in particular. Amy Klobuchar had um, a stellar, uh, you know, performance and a stellar run after her New Hampshire debate performance. It's a question of whether or not she can repeat that here. But the broader question may be, do debates really matter anymore? Do, do people really watch them? Does it impact how they vote? It's a really tough question, an interesting question. And as we get closer to Georgia's primary on March 24th, we will continue to cover the issues that matter most to you, like health care and immigration and the economy. You can count on 11 Alive's Decision 2020 political team to bring you the important stories and updates throughout this election year. Busy night for your 11 Alive storm trackers watching heavy rain here now on the south side, south of I-20. It is a streaming in, so many reports of flooded yards. And we do have uh, concerns about flooding in those flood-prone locations. We have a flood warning in Big Creek right now as the rain continues to come down on the north side as well. But the heaviest rain has shifted here on the south side from Hogansville into Moreland and into Peachtree City. Now, we've had some lightning earlier. Now we have a little bit of lightning over there near Griffin. Uh, at this point, we haven't had any severe warnings, but there have been some gusty winds along with this line and some heavy rainfall, and it's widespread rain all across North Georgia at this hour. So it's adding up. We've already had almost an inch and a half at the airport at Hartsville-Jackson International Airport. Peachtree City just south of there, almost three inches of rain, close to three and a half near Franklin, and we're looking at over an inch and a half here north of Roswell. And this rain train just extends all the way back into Texas. So it's going to take a while for all this rain to taper off and work its way out. And what's finally going to dry us out is a push of cold, dry air that's going to be pushing in behind that cold front. And that will be moving in Thursday night and Friday. So we're going to feel old man winter breathing down our necks once again. Uh, looking out at Noonan, and I left this shot up. I had others to choose from, but it wasn't raining as heavily in Athens or Rome. So I left this up because it is still pouring in Noonan. And we have had some 11 Alive storm trackers tracking uh, uh, tracking the rain today and showing us pictures of flooded roadways. A lot of them have been in Coweta County and the Noonan Peachtree City area. This one, though, from the Cartersville area before the sun went down. Janet Cole heading northbound. 
uh, here, I-75. This was at the main street exit for Cartersville. Just a look at how the flooded, uh, how flooded the roadways are. So this is commonplace across the Atlanta area this evening. So be very careful as you head out. It's really hard to tell how deep some of these flooded roadways are, especially at night when you can't see. And more rain heading in here. This is what we're expecting to see in the forecast as we head into tonight. We'll end up seeing another inch to an inch and a half in some spots, especially on the south side, and then another wave coming in late Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So that flash flood watch is in place. It's officially in place until tomorrow evening, but they may end up extending it with that with more rain heading in Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So flooding is possible with all of this rain. Some spots getting even more than two inches out of this. So the next 12 hours rain each and every hour even after the sun comes up, but the rain chances will go down a bit as we head into our Wednesday. It'll be a little more spotty, a little more showery, and then we'll see the heavier rain moving back in late in the evening and overnight into Thursday morning. So there's that band of rain moving through tonight. Then it becomes more showery by the morning commute. So gray skies, overcast, there'll be some patches of fog most likely. And then as we head into tomorrow night, the next wave of heavy rain moves right back in almost uh, overnight uh, while we're sleeping. Most of the action will be occurring. Uh, of course, Jesse McNeil will be here and West Peary tracking these storms as they move in these potential storms. But I think primarily heavy rain and flooding is going to be the big risk here. And then we may see some slick roadways by daybreak in northeast Georgia. We could have some freezing rain and then it could transition over to snow here in far northeast Georgia. Right now we're not expecting any winter weather impact here in the Atlanta metro area. There could be some slick roadways though here, maybe near Gainesville into Canton as those temperatures start to fall as we head into Thursday night and Friday morning. So it's definitely something to keep our eye on. In fact, Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb has been closely analyzing the latest runs here tonight. He just posted uh, a story on our 11 Alive website, but he also is going to be talking about it on his Facebook Live coming up, which starts at 9 o'clock on Facebook. So you'll want to uh, check in with Chris Holcomb on his Facebook page to get his latest analysis and ask him any questions you may have. So northeast Georgia is going to see potentially maybe an inch to two inches in the highest elevations, maybe a little bit more uh, the closer you get to uh, the state line there. Now that was the American model. This is the Euro. It's showing a little less snowfall in terms of accumulation. So Chris Holcomb will have more in the next Next hour coming up here on a primetime news on the ATL as well coming up in just a few minutes. So a 60% chance of rain on our Wednesday and into Thursday, 80% chance primarily in those overnight hours. It's really going to be coming down and then the bottom falls out. Very cold air moves in and so we feel that temperature. We feel those temperatures down below freezing on Saturday morning, quite chilly even during the day and then the rain returns once we head back into next week. Another wet weather repeat. All right, Sam, thank you. Still ahead, it was a case that outraged thousands online. Next, an attorney's plea for a new trial for the man sentenced for killing his two-week-old daughter. Live today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. 
Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. See, I just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You could have super. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm -hmm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got him. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. Oh, local attorney has filed a request to appeal the murder conviction of Christopher McNabb. McNabb, as you will recall, was sentenced to life in prison last year for murdering his two-week-old daughter. A jury has convicted McNabb and Courtney Bell in the death of their daughter, Kalia. The couple reported the child missing back in 2017. They claimed they woke up and she was gone. Her body was later found near the trailer park where the family lived. Prosecutors argued McNabb was a negligent father and the family's drug use played a role in what happened. Well, now his attorney argues a lack of evidence proves McNabb's conviction was unjustified. We're going to argue to the court that it was not relevant to the question of did Mr. McNabb cause the death of the child, as well as addressing the issue of there being no direct evidence showing that Mr. McNabb caused the death of the child. At this point, the prosecution has not filed a response. You can read the full details of this sad, sad case, plus watch our previous court coverage on 11alive.com if you so choose. Governor Kemp wants a pay raise for teachers. Now it is a question of where to get the money. We are getting a closer look at what taxpayers think. By John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? 
It looks like fun. They <laughs> are fun. And they're, they're convenient. Fun. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So what's There is a new poll suggesting that Georgia voters are willing to pay for teachers to get a raise. Right now, salaries for teachers in Georgia lag behind the rest of the country. This new poll from the University of Georgia shows voters want teachers to be paid more, even if it means their taxes will go up. Governor Kemp pitched a $2,000 raise for school teachers during his State of the State address this year, and some are wondering how he's going to pay for that raise, especially with budget cuts looming over a lot of other state agencies. This poll, though, suggests people don't really care where the money comes from. They just want to see these raises happen for educators. UGA surveyed more than 900 registered voters. About 88% say they support the $2,000 raise for teachers. And 75% of supporters say they would even back it, even if they had to pay higher taxes for it to happen. A majority of people also said they would support giving teachers a pay raise, even if it means taking money from other parts of the budget. Right now, the controversy over state budget cuts in the legislature is getting even more heated. It is tough right now, and Doug Richards is looking more into that coming up a little bit later in primetime. 11 Alive News primetime on the ATL starts now. All right, folks, right now we're following some breaking news right here on primetime. An arrest has been made in the case involving Atlanta native. Anitra Gunn, the Ford Valley State University student who went missing on Valentine's Day. And today investigators discovered a body they believe to be the Westlake High School graduate, 11 Alive. Chinu Her is following the story for us tonight. And Chinu, this man was Anitra's boyfriend. Yeah, that's right. Fort Valley police say they've arrested 23-year-old Demarcus Little. He's charged with criminal damage to property. Investigators say this happened on February 5th, nine days before Anitra went missing. He's accused of smashing her apartment windows and slashing her tires. Police say more charges may be coming. However, in regards to Anitra Gunn's disappearance, the chief of police say that investigation is still ongoing. Members of the task force that was specifically created for this case found that body today a little before 3.30, about 150 yards off the main road, which is Greer Road, about 100 miles south of Atlanta on the Crawford Peach County line, which was just west of the last place investigators say Anitra was last seen. Now, both were just north of the Fort Valley State University campus where she was an, agric an agriculture major. Now, yesterday, the Peach County Sheriff released this photo of Anitra Gunn's car. He says because of the sticks and bushes stuck to the car, they were able to narrow down an area. Now, Sheriff Terry Deese says when they found the body, it was covered with sticks and limbs as if someone was trying to hide the body. Right now, Sheriff Deese says they're not ruling it a homicide and not saying the cause of death, but they do have a person of interest. I think it's pretty common sense who our person of interest is. Can you say it, and though, out loud? Um, just the boyfriend. I mean, we've talked to him three times. Now, again, just to reiterate, the boyfriend, Demarcus Little, is only facing charges of damaging her property, nothing related to her disappearance. Now, I did reach out to Nietzsche Gunn's father, Christopher Gunn, but haven't heard back. All right, Chinu, thanks a lot. By the way, folks, this story is driving a lot of conversation on 11 Alive's Facebook page tonight. A lot of prayers for Anitra's family. Sylvia Chandler posted so sad for her family, for her and her family. She had accomplished so much already. Rise Kenner wrote, this is so heartbreaking. I was hoping and praying Anitra would be found alive and well. And Carol Bartlett posted, what is going on with people? So very sad, God bless. And you can join the conversation right now on 11 Alive's Facebook page. We also have a link to the story on 11alive.com. Switching to our forecast tonight, some of you already experiencing thunder and lightning. For others, it is on the way. That's right. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb is tracking thunderstorms and the chance 
the chance of severe weather in the next few hours, right? Yeah, we're watching this system, and it looks like the worst of it now is pushing to the south of us. If you're watching now on the ATL, you'll see the phone that I have up here. We have 700 people right now on Facebook Live where we're having a conversation about this weather where we're not only talking about the rain risk overnight and that storm chance that's moving to the south of us, but also in just a few minutes on Facebook Live, I'm going to be talking about the snow chances over parts of uh, North Georgia on Thursday as well. But let's break down what we're watching right now. Over North Georgia, things are starting to break up just a little bit. We have some uh, areas of rain, but that's beginning to taper off a little bit. The heaviest rain now is down to the south of us, really along I-20 and southward, where we have these pockets of heavy rain. We have had some rumbles of thunder and flashes of lightning, and that is all pushing down toward the south right now. It was over Atlanta earlier, really heavy rain, a lot of ponding on the roadways. We're seeing a few additional new flood warnings in effect, like up at Big Creek. We have a flood warning that's in effect now due to all the heavy rain. And then this this down to the south is also pushing to the south and to the east. We'll still have more rain feeding in tonight from Alabama, but it doesn't look like it's going to be as heavy, and that severe weather risk is going to start to diminish. The main thing we'll be watching is going to be that rain risk that comes in. As you see this moisture back into Alabama and Mississippi, that's going to keep feeding in here during the, the late night hours and overnight as well. Let me show you what the risks are out there for tonight. It's mainly going to be a flash flood watch that we have in effect for uh, much of North Georgia, metro Atlanta, areas over to the east, east of Athens, along I-20, and then down to the south as well. We could see in all overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning, uh, one to two and a half to one to two inches of rain. We've already seen some impressive rainfall amounts today with these showers that have been moving through here. You can see some of those creeks that are now in flood warnings right here at the Big Creek up also up in the Suwannee area and in East Cobb, a couple of those rivers there and in Floyd County, a couple of rivers that have flood warnings that are in effect now too. This is the kind of stuff that people have been experiencing out there today and late this evening. This this is from Janet Cole. This is at I-75 in Cartersville. Look what was happening with the water there on that ramp and some of that actually going over into I-75. Thank you for sending that, Janet, one of our 11 Alive community storm trackers. Through the rest of the nighttime hours, you can see the bulk of that heavier rain is going to move down to the south. We'll still have lingering showers here that try to break up somewhat by tomorrow morning. I'm really thinking your drive-in to work tomorrow morning will still have wet roads, but hopefully not as much rain coming from the sky early in the morning. So on Wednesday, it's not going to be a washout. We'll see some dry hours at times. We'll have more moisture that feeds our way. And on Thursday, when that moves in, it's going to mix in with some colder air and that will give some spots the chance for some snow. We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. Officers say a little girl in South Carolina was taken by her neighbor and suffocated. Days later, that man took his own life. This heartbreaking update about six-year-old Faith Swetlick comes as officials release more information about her murder. Officials in the city of Casey say based on their investigation, 30-year-old Cody Taylor took Swetlick. He lived just around the corner from her. The coroner did not release much about the circumstances of Swetlick's death, just that she had been suffocated. She said Swetlick was not killed in the woods where her body was found and had only been there a short time before she was discovered. Officials also confirmed Taylor killed himself nearly three days after Swetlick disappeared on February 10th. At a news conference today, officials talked about the devastation this case has really had on their community. It was not just an investigation or a case for us. Faye Swetlick quickly grabbed all of our hearts, and this case became and will always remain very personal for each of us. Faye will never be forgotten. Police say Taylor has no criminal background. They spoke to him after Swetlick disappeared and said he was cooperative and allowed them to search his home. He had a roommate, but police do not believe that person was involved at all. There is a memorial service for Swetlick on Friday. You can continue to follow any updates on this case by downloading the 11 Alive News app. All right, right now facing more than a billion dollars in settlements with thousands of sex crime victims, the Boy Scouts of America has announced it will file for bankruptcy, but the organization must still deal with those pending lawsuits. It's going to impact dozens of survivors here in Atlanta. 11 Alive's Caitlin Ross spoke to an attorney representing many of them. It is a lifetime of suffering. Attorney Darren Penn has been working with alleged victims of Boy Scouts of America's sexual abuse for years. Their cases had been argued and were moving forward in local civil courts when late this afternoon they were all removed. Think about all of the survivors in the state of Georgia 
that now have to actually go to Delaware if they want to seek any kind of redress. Go to Delaware because that's where the Boy Scouts of America filed for bankruptcy. He says if the victims want compensation, they'll have to all fight the case there. I think it's a sad day for, for all survivors of this kind of abuse. The Boy Scouts of Atlanta is a separate organization and in a statement told 11 Alive, the Atlanta Area Council has not filed for bankruptcy. Meetings and activities, district and council events, other scouting adventures and countless service projects are taking place as usual. In short, there should be no change to the local scouting experience. They've taken proactive steps to protect scouts, including always having too deep leadership, prohibiting one-on-one -on -one contact, always having separate sleeping and bathing arrangements, and sticking to strict media guidelines. Penn says the organization as a whole has taken a lot of steps to protect kids now, but says it should still be held accountable for any abuse that happened on its watch. The Boy Scouts of America is a huge, enormous organization, and it's not going anywhere. And he also says there will be a strict deadline when survivors can actually come forward. There is now a call for a federal prosecutor to investigate what some call a cover-up. It's a new development tonight after our exclusive reveal investigation. It raises questions about what a Georgia lawmaker and police chief did and did not do in the critical minutes after a deadly hit and run. The driver, Ralph Dover, did not stop or call 911 after he hit Eric Keyes last September. Instead, he called his friend, State Representative Trey Kelly. As Keyes lay dying in a ditch, Kelly did not call 911. He called Cedartown's police chief at home. Keys died, and five months later, nobody has been charged. This story has 155,000 views and counting. It's been shared more than 2,000 times on our 11 Live Facebook page. And there's a growing call among Democratic state lawmakers and at least one Republican activist for Kelly to resign. Reveal investigator Faith Abube broke the story, has been following the developments. This latest one is now calling for a federal probe. Yeah, so this time it's the Georgia Ethics Watchdogs joining the call for accountability. And this morning we were there as the president of the group walked into the federal building in downtown Atlanta to deliver a two-page letter to the U.S. Attorney's Office. That letter is urging B.J. Pack to appoint a federal prosecutor to investigate, quote, the potential cover-up of a crime. Again, they're specifically calling for the aftermath of the hit-and-run crash to be investigated, not the crash itself. I don't think it's their role to investigate the crime itself, but I think that there is potential for cover-up, and so an investigation by the U.S. attorney would basically exonerate those who are innocent in this situation and hopefully hold accountable those who are guilty. You are now satisfied that the Polk County DA says he's looking into this and will present a case to the grand jury? Well, I'll have faith in the Polk County DA once that they make an announcement. I wouldn't criticize the job that they've done so far, um, but I think that there needs to be some extra oversight because I think it could be a federal crime in terms of a cover-up. So that's William Perry, the president of this watchdog group, and that wasn't his only stop today. No, he also hand-delivered another letter at the state capitol today, specifically to Representative Trey Kelly's office. We also saw Representative Trey Kelly in the blue suit there in that video. Back in the House chamber today, that letter now waiting on his desk is asking for him to step down. The Georgia Ethics Watchdogs also plan to send a similar letter to Cedartown Police Chief Jamie Newsom. So let's talk more about the Georgia Ethics Watchdogs. Can you tell us more about the group and why is their voice significant here? So they describe themselves as a nonpartisan ethics watchdog group. They are fighting for transparency, accountability, and ethics in government. They've been a part of some high-profile cases here locally. The founder was also a former executive of the well-known watchdog group Common Cause. Now here's how he explains why he thinks the Georgia Ethics Watchdogs needed to speak out on the reveal investigation. This is about bringing accountability to a really awful situation. You've seen the reaction on social media. Unfortunately, a lot of times I think that goes unheard in terms of an official process. This is about making sure an official process happens. All right, so what's next? The U.S. Attorney's Office has to review this letter and decide whether there needs to be a federal prosecutor looking into what some have called an attempted cover-up by a state representative. We're also waiting for the DA to present the case to the grand jury in Polk County. There are so many layers to the story. It's all there on 11live.com. Great work, Faith. Thanks. Up next, she went to get her driver's license and walked out empty-handed. The question she never expected to be asked.
And Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb is live on Facebook right now taking all your weather questions. You can join the conversation on that Facebook page. We're going to catch up with him after the break. And don't forget, folks, we're streaming right now live on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. Subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. We've got more 11 Alive news prime time after the break. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice got guy. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Chess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. right, right. about that. Well, reward would be... Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it. A naturalized US citizen says she should be allowed to have a Georgia's driver's license, but was denied by the Department of Driver Services in Norcross. Yeah, our very own uh, Ellen Lopez spoke with her today, and she says that she was told her immigration status could not be verified. It's a process. Just a few boxes left to unpack. Lindsay Matea and her husband moved from Virginia to Dunwoody just a week ago. One of the first things they did was apply for a Georgia driver's license in Norcross. I had actually brought every single government issued piece of paper that I own. I had my photo taken. I took the eye exam. So I, I had assumed that everything was going really well and that I'd be walking out with a driver's license. But Lindsay says only her husband walked out with one. The guy behind the counter made copies of all of my documentation and he handed them back to me. He said, um, your immigration status cannot be verified today. I mean, this is my home to me and it, I don't, um, think of this country as anything but home. So, um, to be treated as though I don't belong here, it was quite shocking. Lindsay says she provided all documents required by Georgia DDS, including proof of residency, her Virginia driver's license, her original certificate of naturalization from when she was seven, and her social security card. I've just grown up my whole life thinking of myself as as every other American in this country and thinking of myself as no different. And so then to have that part questioned really cut me very deeply. By the way, DDS says it uses a federal database to verify immigration documents. And so that includes cert certificates of naturalization, which the agency says can take several days to process. We have added their statement on 11alive.com. We're going to continue to follow to see what happens in this case. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, and we are in the Storm Tracker Center tonight tracking these showers that are heavier now on the south side and areas to the east of us. If you're wondering why this phone is sticking up here in my shot, it's because I'm doing a Facebook Live right now. We have just uh, about 350 people on Facebook Live right now where we are talking about weather. Many people are telling me what they have in their area. Buffy Triplett says, I'm ready for summer weather. Um, let's see here. A lot of other people said... Um, hello, Starla McCollum says my ARC is in the shop. Um, 
and a lot of folks are wondering what's going to happen with the potential for snow and any issues with driving conditions coming up. So I'm, I'm going to break down all of this for you coming up. Let's concentrate first on this rain that we're having out there right now. The heaviest activity has pushed down to the south where we have uh, heavier showers now uh, lining up here from parts of Troop County through Meriwether County. I'll bring you all closer to that right here into uh, Pike, Lamar County, uh, Upson County, also Spalding County, Southern Coweta, Fayette County, heavier showers, Henry County, heavier rain, Butts County into Jasper County. All of this is really producing uh, some heavy rain and the potential for some ponding on the roadways and even creeks and streams that are swelling there as well. If you go back up to Atlanta, we have had some good rain that has been falling here, but we're beginning to see things break up just a little bit and more breaks in parts of North Georgia with lighter activity with some holes in that, but more rain's going to be coming in tonight as well. We don't think it's going to be particularly heavy overnight as most of that heavy rain is pushing down to the south, but still back into Alabama and Mississippi, you can see these lighter showers that'll keep moving in. I think these thunderstorms between Birmingham and Montgomery will move down more to the south along with that line. So that's why I'm not concerned about heavy rain overnight or any severe weather overnight either. Let's take a look out there right now and you can see what we're watching as we go through the rest of the nighttime hours. This is a picture from Linda Schust in the Brookhaven area and I know many folks yards look like this right now with there's just been so much water and there's nowhere for that water to go. It just causes runoff. It might mess with your mulch a little bit and um, really causes some spots to look more like a river in people's backyards than just regular old yard there. So that's why we have this flash flood watch in effect for much of North Georgia, Metro Atlanta, areas to the south and east of Atlanta as well, where we've seen some impressive rainfall amounts so far. Uh, total from earlier today, through tomorrow, one to two inches. We've already seen some impressive amounts so far and maybe another quarter an inch to a half inch during the overnight hours. So this is a look at what we're watching here through seven in the morning. You can see the blue color indicating where we can see a half inch to an inch and a half, those lighter amounts up in North Georgia. And then as we head into Thursday with more rain coming in, you see the purple color showing up here in Metro Atlanta, showing between one and a half to two and a half inches of rain, and even some reds indicating more than two and a half inches. So we have these additional waves of rain that'll keep moving through. So here's what we're watching now. All of that heavier stuff is down on the south side. It'll keep pushing down to the south. And then by tomorrow morning, even though I think the roads are still going to be wet for you driving into work, I do think that we'll see some breaks in the rain and some dry hours at times with more rain that will begin developing late in the afternoon, mainly into the evening hours on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, that's when things get interesting, especially in North Georgia, as we're still going to have some moisture around as colder air starts to move in. We'll begin to see some winter mix developing in Northeast Georgia, and it really looks like that that chance for winter weather will mainly be in far north Georgia. I really think here in metro Atlanta, we're going to see just rain here. It'll be a cold rain. Possibly some north metro counties might have a few snow flurries that will mix in with that. But then the rain moves out later in the afternoon and into the evening hours, and we begin to dry out. And we hope we dry out enough Thursday night into Friday so we won't have to deal with any black ice or any slick spots developing on Friday morning. Uh, when temperatures get closer to the freezing mark. Here's a look at some of those potential accumulations. This is based on the European model. This is the one that we're leaning more toward to be more realistic of what we think we're going to see here. A lot of the models are still varying on some of those accumulations, but this is showing far north Georgia, parts of Gilmer County, Fanning County, uh, Towns County, Union County, Rabin County, even into northwest Georgia, Dayton, Walker County, potentially seeing some of those lighter accumulations. Some of those could get up to one to two inches, uh, but I don't think that's going to be really widespread. And again, we don't really see any accumulations here in the metro area. So here's that seven day outlook where tomorrow we will have some dry hours. It's not going to rain all day long. Uh, just a few of those showers that we'll have around the area and temperatures that will get up uh, to about 57 degrees. And then going into Thursday, that's when we see that mainly cold rain here in Metro Atlanta, the potential for a winter mix to the north that'll be ending close to freezing Friday morning. So that's why we hope a lot of that moisture will dry up on the roads before Friday morning and then highs near 48 with the sunshine returning. Saturday looks great, mostly sunny, a cold start, but we get up to 54 in the afternoon. Uh, clouds increase Sunday with a 20% chance for a shower late and then a 60% chance for rain Monday diminishing to 20% on Tuesday with temperatures that'll be in the 60s as we begin next week. PETA is honoring the five-year-old boy who saved his family, including their dog, from a massive house fire. 
Noah Woods was granted the Hero to Animals Award. He was celebrated after saving his family from a house fire in Bartow County last week. Noah was the first to wake up. He grabbed his sister and the family dog and they climbed through a window and got out. He also alerted other family members, allowing them time to escape as well. Peter released his statement saying in the face of a fire, Noah stayed calm and ensured the safety of his family, including his dog. They hope his kindness will inspire people to remember their animal companions during emergencies. Way to go. You know, you, you hear her voice all the time, but you know who she is. Next, we're going to introduce you to the voice of the train at the world's busiest airport. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice. got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, yeah. Right, right. About that. Well, reward would be... Slimming, Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. We've all heard this before. We've got the busiest airport in the world. And if you are in Hartsville Jackson International Airport often, you've probably also been welcome aboard the plane train. That's right. Uh, but just who is behind that B, as in Bravo, voice you hear while you're riding? Liza Lucas takes us on a trip to find out. Every day, over 250,000 excited, exhausted, and even on edge travelers rely on this voice. Welcome aboard the plane train. To guide them to their gates. The next stop is for tea gates. And the woman behind that reassuring voice, Atlanta resident Sharon Feingold. It's so, I'm like, when I hear the voice, I'm like, I can't, I can't focus. I know, but I'm like, it's, com <laughs> it's like hearing like an echo of your own voice. Believe it or not, the journey to becoming voice of the plane train all all started on an airplane. I happened to be on an airplane and was reading, and there was a whole article about this whole infrastructure down here, and there was the name of a, a guy. I thought, well, let me just reach out to him and just see if he has any plans to do anything with the boys. And of course, Sharon wanted to make sure her plane train announcements were anything but plain. This is a driverless train. People want to feel confident in technology. And so I felt like splitting the difference between a real person and having a little bit of a robot edge was the kind of right combination. No way. That t it takes a second, right, for people to make the connection. Whoa, it is <laughs> Welcome aboard the plane train. How often have you heard this lady before? Oh, I hear her every day. Every day? Every day for the last two years. Well, I have to introduce you over here. This, this is her right. Oh, hi. 
Whether or not riders made the connection between Sharon's voice and the plane train is up in the air, but the role is nevertheless a special one for Sharon. What's your name? Del Reese. The next stop is Concourse D. D is in Del Reese. And before we wrapped up our own ride on the plane train, we had to put the voice of the train to the test with an 11 Alive WXIA TV sign off. The next stop is Concourse W, W as in WXIA. Please hold on, this train is departing. That is awesome. All right, straight ahead, uh, a new look at where the Democratic presidential candidates stand ahead of tomorrow's debate in Las Vegas. The power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta. Almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire... I'm, excuse me, I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, where... We continue to watch the rain that is falling in the area. It's beginning to lighten up a little bit north of I-20. We're seeing a few uh, more holes in the rain shield that we have here. Still some pockets of light rain covering North Georgia. Uh, the heaviest activity is here on the south side where you can see some moderate rain that's falling and even some pockets of heavy rain. And it's been a little heavier from Meriwether County uh, into Troop County, Heard County, Coweta County, Fayette, Clayton, down into Pike and Lamar County, uh, Spalding County, Henry County, over toward Newton County, Jasper County, Butts County, seeing some of that moderate rain. I just finished my Facebook Live, and a lot of folks on the south side were confirming what we're seeing on radar, saying that it was raining really hard. And we had that heavier rain in Atlanta a little bit earlier, but we're seeing some uh, improving weather on the north side. Still some light rain, but again, beginning to taper off a little bit more. We're not finished with the rain, though. There is more of this back into Alabama, also Mississippi. Louisiana and even into Texas. That's just going to continue feeding in here tonight, but I do think it's going to be more of lighter rain coming in tonight as this heavier rain is going to be pushing down toward the south of us. And any rain, though, is going to give us the potential for 
that additional water to drain into creeks and streams and potentially cause some flooding. So take a look at what we're watching out there right now. This is a live look down in Coweta County. They're on the south side of Noonan, where we showed you there are those spots of light to moderate rain coming down. What I want you to see here, I know it's kind of hard to see at night, but I was kind of watching some of those raindrops. There you can see some of that right there hitting these puddles, as well as see the street light right here. That's just kind of showing you uh, some of that rain that continues to fall uh, down in Coweta County at this hour. So it's very wet there. We've had a lot of reports of ponding on the roadways and uh, folks just really have to take it easy because it's so easy to hydroplane with the rain that we're having out there. And there's that flash flood watch uh, north of Atlanta, including much of North Georgia, over to the east of us toward Athens and even east of Lake Oconee, down toward Macon and southwest of the city. We've already seen some impressive rainfall amounts close to an inch in some spots, and we might see yet even another inch for the overnight hours, and all that drains down to those creeks and streams and can cause uh, some flooding with locally higher amounts possible. So as you can see tonight, that heavier rain moves down to the south, uh, but we'll still see lighter rain off and on during those overnight hours. We hope to see some breaks by tomorrow morning where uh, it's still going to be wet for your drive into work in very damp conditions, but the rain is going to start to taper off a little bit and we'll actually see some dry hours early tomorrow with another round of rain coming in later Wednesday into Thursday. That rain can mix in with some cold air over North Georgia and cause the potential for some flurries there. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, in a couple of minutes, sir, you know, some 160 Americans who arrived back in the U.S. of A. after being evacuated from China are no longer quarantined for the potential exposure to a coronavirus. Buses just filled with Americans left two military bases in California. They were aboard the first of the two planes evacuated from the center of the outbreak in Wuhan, China. Another group of Americans is also expected to be released from quarantine on Thursday. In China now, the virus continues to take a huge toll. Over the past 24 hours, there have been more than 1,800 new confirmed cases, bringing the total to around 73,000. So far, more than 1,800 people have died from that virus. China's foreign ministry says the government is making an all-out effort to counter that outbreak. The coronavirus isn't just impacting people's health. The pain is now being felt in an unlikely industry. We're talking about weddings. Many bridal designers operate out of China. And due to ongoing quarantine, some factories have been forced to shut down. That means big shipping delays. Some designers say they won't be able to ship out dresses until the middle of the summer. It's an extra layer of stress nobody could have expected. I do have dresses that are out there waiting to be fulfilled. So I'm, I'm nervous about being sure that my gowns will be able to get here in time. This is a bride's wedding day. And if they fell in love with a dress, you don't want to be that person to say, I'm sorry, you know, we can't get that for you. So I just very cautious. The good news, most of the factories are expected to open soon if they haven't already, but we could be feeling the impacts for months to come. So if you order something special, it may be smart to have a backup plan. Remember, we are keeping you updated on all things related to the coronavirus outbreak. Download the 11 Live app to find out more about the symptoms and confirmed cases here in the U.S. All right, police will now release the photograph of the man they say walked into a restaurant on Valentine's Day and shot three people. Here's that picture. Investigators said the man walked into the Old Lady Gang restaurant in the Camp Creek Marketplace and opened fire, injuring those three people. They believe only one victim was the intended target. There is now a $2,000 reward for anyone with information about that shooting. Real Housewives star, Atlanta star, uh, Candy Burris is the co-owner of the restaurant. She says she is praying for those victims. Safety a top concern during the upcoming men's basketball Final Four. Multiple public agencies are involved in a preparedness er exercise at the Georgia World Congress Center. They discuss ways officials can work together in the event of a public emergency. The Final Four will tip off on April 4th at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The championship game is two days later. And Fulton County is ensuring there are, will be no mistakes when you head to the polls for next month's presidential primary. Today, the county hosted a mock election. Members of the community were able to test the new voting machines. Now, it starts with a familiar touch screen, but now voters must take a paper ballot and drop it in a scanner. That's the only way you're going to be able to make sure that your vote is counted. Georgia's presidential primary is on March 24th. The last day to register is Monday. Early voting in Fulton County is from March 2nd to March 20th. 
Well, state lawmakers appear poised to restore many of the budget cuts proposed by Governor Brian Kemp. The cuts became necessary after lawmakers cut taxes two years ago and state revenues fell short. 11 Alive's Doug Richards has more. Governor Kemp's proposed budget cuts met some pretty quick resistance here at the Capitol. Now, House leaders have restored many of those budget cuts, at least for now. The GBI Crime Lab is among the state services that Kemp proposed for cuts and that lawmakers resisted. The governor's budget calls for cuts of more than $1.5 million at the Crime Lab, cutting positions for scientists and lab techs this year, and even more cuts for those positions next year. The House Appropriations Committee restored many of those cuts, as well as cuts in programs like substance abuse treatment programs, mental health programs, and accountability courts. Looking at it, realizing that the cuts that were proposed there at the accountability courts are uh, funds that were ongoing, things that they're already doing, and so those funds need to be replaced. You took, you know, sort of two and a half million bucks out of mental health. And you gave two and a half million dollars to private prisons. Like, how does that work, right? So even though you're saying, hey, we're going to help, in reality, you're moving this stuff into a place that ultimately hurts people. Lawmakers said they found other cuts in the budget to compensate for the cuts that they restored, the details of which are emerging and will likely get a vote in the full House Wednesday. Senator Bernie Sanders appears to be pulling far ahead of his Democratic competitors in the race for the presidential nomination. Our new exclusive NBC Wall Street Journal poll shows Sanders with a double-digit lead nationally with support from 27 percent of Democratic primary voters. Meanwhile, former Vice President Joe Biden is now polling at 15 percent. On the rise here is former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. He is currently tied with Senator Elizabeth Warren and just one percentage point higher than Pete Buttigieg. Bloomberg is going to join the other Democratic candidates on the debate stage for the very first time tomorrow night in Nevada. It was a case that outraged thousands online next an attorney's plea for a new trial for the man sentenced for killing his two-week-old daughter. Newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. You know, like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And, of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. See, I just do what I say. I'm no, 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 there is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. 
Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. <laughs> So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm -hmm. I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. Attorney has now filed a request to appeal the murder conviction of Christopher McNabb. Now, McNabb, McNabb was sentenced to life in prison last year for murdering his two week old daughter. A jury convicted McNabb and Courtney Bell in the death of their daughter, Kayla. The couple reported the child missing in 2017. They claimed they woke up and she was gone. Her body was later found near the trailer park where the family lived. Prosecutors argued McNabb was a negligent father and the family's drug use played a role. Now his attorney argues lack of evidence proves McNabb's conviction was unjustified. We're going to argue to the court that it was not relevant to the question of did Mr. McNabb cause the death of the child, as well as addressing the issue of there being no direct evidence showing that Mr. McNabb caused the death of the child. At this point, the prosecution has not yet filed a response. If they approve, the judge will set a date for the hearing. A mistrial now declared in the hacking case against a Gwinnett County judge. A jury hung on whether Catherine Schrader was guilty or innocent of those charges. Schrader is accused of hiring a private investigator, an investigative team, to look through her computer for evidence that someone from the district attorney's office was hacking it. Three other people were charged in this case. All of them took plea deals in exchange for their testimony during Schrader's trial. A former Gwinnett County police officer on trial for excessive force took the stand to testify today. Robert McDonald is charged with violating his oath as an officer and assaulting a man during a traffic stop. Joe Henke reports from the courthouse in Gwinnett County where the defense rested its case after McDonald's testimony. Moments before Robert McDonald arrived, then Gwinnett County Police Sergeant Michael Bongiovanni pulled over a driver named Demetrius Hollins. Cell phone video shows Bongiovanni pulling Hollins out of his car and then hitting him in the face. As it relates to that, I heard my sergeant yell he was in a fight over the radio, so hearing he's in a fight over the radio, that probably means somebody's going to get arrested. Bongiovanni took a plea deal to avoid prison time in this case in exchange for his testimony. Cell phone video shows McDonald then arriving with Hollins on the ground. McDonald says as he ran up with his gun drawn but finger off the trigger, he noticed Hollins on his side and looking back. It was, I was going to run up and use my foot to push his shoulder back down the ground because I still had my weapon in my hand, not knowing if there's other people in the car, if he had a weapon. I don't know what's going on at this point. At this point, McDonald says he missed Hollins' shoulder. And as I was bringing my foot down, he moved, and my foot missed his shoulder and hit him right here on the side of the cheek. At that point, he rolled down the ground, and I looked and saw he was, was indeed handcuffed. McDonald said using his hands to hold down Hollins instead was not an option. I considered it, but considering the fact that I had my pistol in my hands, I didn't want to, at that time, have, possibly have him reach up and grab my gun. McDonald testified he did not press his gun to Holland's head, but he held the gun near it because they were at close range and next to a busy intersection. Um, if, God forbid, you do have to take a shot, the bullet's going straight down. It's not going to hit my sergeant or an innocent motorist two cars over. Um, you know where it's going to go. The state, though, questioned McDonald's use of force by pulling his gun and not asking if the man was handcuffed or resisting as he ran up. When you come up, did you think Sergeant Bon Giovanni was in a life or death situation? I didn't know. When asked by the state, McDonald said he didn't see Hollins actively fighting when he arrived and ran up with his gun drawn, but was rolling onto his side. McDonald also said at some point the gun did touch Hollins' head. We expect to hear closing arguments from attorneys in this case in the morning before the jury starts deliberating. We're still tracking that heavier rain that is on the south side right now. This is the same system that came through Atlanta a little bit earlier uh, that was causing really heavy rain here. It's now drifted down toward the south. We're beginning to see this break up a little bit north of I-20. Still rain, but just not as heavy as it was earlier when this band came through. And you can see that heavier rain that is generally south of I-20. There are a couple of pockets there uh, to the east of Athens or west of Athens and parts of uh, Walton County up toward Barrow County where you still have some moderate rain. And south of Atlanta, we uh, start running into this more moderate rain in south DeKalb County, Henry County, Clayton County, Fayette. 
uh, Coweta County, also down toward Heard, Troop County, Merriweather County, and this is where we have more of the heaviest activity in Pike and Lamar County and Spalding County, over toward Butts County and into Jasper County and close to Putnam County too. I had numerous reports from folks on Facebook Live just a little while ago uh, from folks on the south side that were indicating what we are showing here on radar is showing that moderate and even those pockets of heavy rain. Now, that came through Atlanta earlier, and it's now drifting down to the south, and we really think that that will continue moving down to the south with that heavier rain. We even had some thunder and lightning here, as you saw some of that in Coweta County and Fayette County a couple hours ago. We're not seeing any new lightning strikes with this right now. And as we go out into Alabama, it still doesn't end, but we're not seeing any heavier rain. Now, we do have this that is really south of Birmingham and just north of Montgomery, right there along 85 and north of that. That's going to keep pushing down to the south. That'll be impacting Columbus in just a little while and near Auburn, Alabama. But to the north of this, it's mainly just lighter rain, and that's what's going to continue feeding through for the rest of the overnight hours and also toward tomorrow morning. Take a look at what we're watching out there. We've been uh, seeing some uh, a lot of rain in the area, and the main threat that we have for the overnight hours is going to be a flash flood watch. Even though things are tapering off in North Georgia, the waters can still rise because we have all of that runoff from the heavier rain earlier that is still making its way down to creeks and streams and those low-lying areas. So we could see uh, some flash flooding here in some spots where Overnight, we might see another quarter of an inch to a half inch, maybe some localized areas picking up another inch of rain, but I think those heavier amounts will be on the south side. This is how it looked earlier up in Cartersville along I-75. This was sent to us by 11 Alive Community Storm Tracker Janet Cole, showing that heavy rain there on this ramp, and that even extended over there into those emergency lanes of 75. So uh, that's what some folks are dealing with tonight as this rain continues to move through. For tonight, we think it's going to be lighter amounts over uh, north of I-20 with less than a half inch, but those heavier amounts down to the south. But then Wednesday, we'll see a break in the action, and then more rain comes in on Thursday. That gets us back up to about a half inch to an inch and a half of rain with those higher amounts there on the south side. And rain isn't the only thing that we'll see in Georgia on Thursday. Let me show you where it gets a little bit tricky going into Thursday in north Georgia. Tonight, we see this rain starting to taper off in the morning. The roads are still going to be wet for your drive into work. It'll be cloudy, but we don't see active heavy rain coming through. We'll see some dry hours during the day tomorrow and then more rain starting to come in in the afternoon and then into the evening. Additional rain moves in overnight. Uh, the Thursday, uh, Wednesday night into early Thursday. This is at 7 in the morning Thursday. Rainy conditions in Atlanta, but it'll be a cold rain as temperatures will be above freezing here. But it's in North Georgia where we'll begin to see some of that mixing there in far northeast Georgia. Maybe some mixing over far north Georgia as well with some lighter accumulations there. We really think it's going to be mainly rain here. Maybe some north metro counties could see a few flurries mixing in, but we don't expect any accumulations here. By late afternoon, the back edge of that moisture moves out of here and we begin the drying out process, but it's also going to get colder too. So any moisture left behind on Friday morning with temperatures near freezing, we could see some black ice developing in some areas. We don't think that's going to be widespread, but just know that there is a chance for that. Now Thursday, some of those uh, snow totals here. Uh, this is the European model, which is showing some of those accumulations mainly far north, nothing here in Atlanta, uh, but possibly one to two inches in some parts of Gilmer and Fannin County, maybe into Union Towns and Raymond County as well. Lighter amounts over in parts of northwest Georgia. Uh, we're getting still differing opinions from the models. This is the one that I think will be most reflective of what is actually what we think is going to happen there for Thursday. So no real issues here in Atlanta, just rainy conditions. It'll be a cold rain on Thursday with highs only near 48 degrees. We see that rain end later in the day and then clearing out on Friday, decreasing clouds, more sunshine, but it's going to be chilly, a high of 48. Uh, Saturday morning, we're down to below freezing at 30 degrees with a high of 54, so warming up a little bit in the afternoon with mostly sunny skies. Clouds increase again Sunday with only a 20% chance for a shower late. Monday, 60% chance for rain with a high of 62, and then mid-60s on Tuesday as that rain chance goes back down to 20%. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. This is the first full day of workouts for the Bravos, the Braves at spring training, but the big news tonight is strong words from outfielder. Nick Markakis. This is all about the cheating scandal, about the Astros and Major League Baseball. Here's Maria Martin in Northport, Florida. It angers you, um, especially from a guy who has played the game 
the right way his whole career. Today is the first day at Northport, Florida, that all of the Braves were here for spring training. And what Nick Markakis was talking about is what players around the league continue to address. The veteran outfielder, he didn't hold back when he was talking about the Astros' sign-stealing scandal. In fact, he talked for three long minutes, completely unfiltered, about how mad the whole situation actually made him. What they did was bull****. Um, you know, they took a lot of uh, opportunities away from people and, uh, you know, possibly ruined people's careers. I feel like every single guy over there needs a beating. Everything's been handled the wrong way. You've got two guys that are sitting at home that you can kind of, you know, give them a little bit of leeway. Um, and they're not, they're not in the game right now. And then you've got uh, the players who did it who are, are, are scot-free. You know, they're going to be able to go out there and compete with no ramifications at all, which is wrong. And I think the commissioner completely handled it the wrong way, the way he handled the situation. He should be embarrassed of himself. Everybody has their opinion, you know, and, and um, you know, the guys that, that have played a long time and done everything right, and, and um, you know, he's afforded his opinion. Now, Mark Cake, as a 14-year veteran, is ready to be in whatever role the Braves see fit this season. And what's interesting is the Astros actually will make a trip to Atlanta to close out the 2020 year in September. Should Mark Cake be on the field, it'll be the first time he's faced Houston since 2017. All right, check this out. Good news still for NASCAR driver Ryan Newman. His team rushed uh, on Rush Freeway Fenway Racing released a statement saying that Newman is awake. He's speaking with doctors and his family. It's been a little more than 24 hours since we saw this frightening crash on the last lap of the Daytona 500. Newman was taken to Halifax Hospital in Daytona Beach, and that's where he is tonight. The race team also thanked fans for their heartfelt support and messages of love. We'll be right back. Picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Cross Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Do you 
together we come alive. Ampl so we're going to see uh, some breaks in the rain tomorrow. Uh, it's still going to be cloudy, maybe some mist and drizzle around, but there will be some dry hours early on tomorrow before the next round of rain comes in Wednesday night into Thursday. And on Thursday, that's when it gets interesting in northeast Georgia, where there's that potential for some snow flurries to occur in far north Georgia. We think it's going to be just a cold rain here with temperatures that will be above freezing. Friday morning, we'll watch for the potential for any black ice that could develop on any of that moisture that doesn't dry up so we'll watch for that Friday but we don't think it'll be widespread but if we finally see the sunshine returning mostly sunny Saturday and then more rain by next week All right, oh, thanks, Chris. man it's been ups and downs uh, ups Whoa. and downs yeah. stick around prime time rolls on at 10 and made it home from different backgrounds languages and religions and who can forget about the food they all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and southern hospitality Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. Yeah. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say in the flow. No, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. <laughs> 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. We have breaking news to begin with. An arrest in the case involving... Anitra Gunn, a missing college student from Atlanta. In the last 30 minutes, police just released new information on the man behind bars tonight. 11 Alive's Chinu Hur is following the breaking details. Well, guys, uh, that's right. We just got the mugshot of Demarcus Little, Anitra Gunn's boyfriend. Fort Valley police say they've arrested 22-year-old Little. He's charged with criminal damage to property. Investigators say this happened on February 5th, nine days before Anitra Gunn disappeared on Valentine's Day. He's accused 
by smashing her apartment windows and slashing her tires. Now, police say more charges may be coming. However, in regards to Anitra Gunn's disappearance, the chief of police says that investigation is ongoing. Members of the task force that was specifically created for this case found that body today a little before 3.30, about 150 yards off of Greer Road, about 100 miles south of Atlanta on the Crawford Peach County line, which was just west of the last place investigators say Anitra was last seen. Now, both were just north of the Fort, of the Fort Valley State University campus where Gunn was an agriculture major. Yesterday, the Peach County Sheriff released this photo of Anitra Gunn's car. He says because of the sticks and bushes stuck to the car, they were able to narrow down an area. Now, Sheriff Terry Deese says when they found the body, it was covered with limbs and sticks as if someone was trying to hide the body. Right now, Sheriff Deese says they're not ruling it a homicide and not saying the cause of death. I think it's pretty common sense who our person of interest is. Can you say it and though out loud? Um, just the boyfriend. I don't know. We've talked to him three times. All right, and just to reiterate, police say Gunn's boyfriend, Demarcus Little, is only facing charges of damaging her property, nothing related to her disappearance. Now, I did reach out to Anitra Gunn's father, Christopher Gunn, but haven't heard back. Chanu, thank you. Now to the weather. The rain's still falling, even though it's letting up in some neighborhoods in Atlanta Metro. But this is what it looked like in Midtown about an hour ago. Time to bust out the kayak from the top of your roof. I mean, the weather gear has been handy right at the front door. It looks like it's going <laughs> to stay there for a little bit. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb tracking it for us all. Chris, plus... What can we expect on the drive in tomorrow morning? It's going to be uh, hopefully some breaks in the morning. I really think the roads are going to be still wet in the morning, but we're beginning to see this heavier rain tapering off, and we hope that that trend will continue by tomorrow morning for your drive in. Here's what we're watching right now. We have this heavier rain right now here on the south side. We're even seeing a little bit of lightning that is developing here uh, in parts of Pike County over toward Lamar County with that heavier rain right there near the Meriwether County line. This is where the heaviest activity is. It stretches back toward LaGrange. Also more of this heavy rain moving over toward the Putnam County area. North of that, moderate rain up into parts of Henry County. But notice how in Atlanta it is light and it's even breaking up a little bit over North Georgia. It's not ending, but at least it's not as heavy in North Georgia as it was earlier. And it looks like that heavier rain is going to continue sliding down to the south as well as this heavy rain in Alabama moving away. So we're just going to be dealing with this part of it here, which is mainly light rain still overnight that we think will begin to taper off by tomorrow morning. Take a live look out there right now and you can see what we've been watching. This is from Bartow County earlier from one of our 11 Alive Community Storm Trackers, Rodney Collum, with a flooded field there. And many folks are seeing some of that flooding with this flash flood watch in effect for much of the area until tomorrow evening. We'll talk more about that and what to expect when more rain comes in Thursday. That'll mix in with cold air. We'll pinpoint the areas that can see snow on Thursday. A mistrial with the hung jury in the hacking case against a Gwinnett County judge. Catherine Schrader is accused of hiring a private investigative team to look through her computer for evidence that someone from the DA's office was hacking it. Three other people who were charged in the case all took plea deals in exchange for their testimony during Schrader's trial. New at 10, a woman hired to care for a 90-year-old hospice patient arrested accused of being passed out drunk, hammered while her patient was screaming for help after falling to the floor. John Shirick spoke to the patient's daughter tonight who was angry and has a word of warning to all. She is the neighborhood sweetheart. Betty Henry, 90 years old, has lived in her Cobb County home for nearly 50 years, everyone's dear friend. And she's now in home hospice care, needing round-the-clock live-in caregivers. But last week, after Henry's daughter in Florida couldn't reach her, police broke into Henry's house, her daughter listening to it all on her phone. And she is screaming for help, and the alarms are going off on the bed. And then police found Henry's caregiver, Tracy Sanders, in her room. And when the policeman opened the door, he went, oh my. He said the smell of alcohol would have knocked you down. She was completely knocked out, drunk, stone cold, out of it. Police charged Sanders with felony neglect to the elderly. Sanders' husband, John McLenathan, also working as one of Betty Henry's live-in caregivers, was already in jail, charged with with beating Sanders. 
Neighbor Dwight Benjamin Creel, who often checks on Henry, says he had just called Henry's daughter to warn her about the caregivers. I saw a pint bottle sitting in the back pocket of the woman. She was really slurring her words. She was really intoxicated. It was easy to tell. At first, they were great, but they sure scammed me. They put on a big front. You can't imagine how mad I am. Byerly says she thought she'd done a thorough background check on the couple before hiring them a few months ago. For her mother's sake, she tells everyone now. Make 100% sure you know who you're getting and where they're from. You, you've got to be 100%. Betty Henry, doing better, hopes to return home from the hospital soon with her new caregiver. Rescue crews are still looking for a missing hiker in Dawson County. Eddie Noonkester lost his way while hiking along the Appalachian Trail on Friday. Deputies say he managed to make a distress call, but so far, rescue crews were only able to locate some of his belongings. Officials fear heavy rain could really take a toll on their search. With the uh, possibility of winter weather moving in uh, and being exposed to the elements, uh, you know, our priority is to try to find him in these next 48 hours. At the time, deputies say there's no sign of foul play. Opening statements started today in the trial of an accused serial rapist in Fulton County. 54 year old DeAndre Shabazz is on trial for sexually assaulting 12 women between 2002 and 2005. According to the district attorney, Shabazz would force the women into his car and assault them at a nearby park or abandoned home. However, the defense argues it's a case of sloppy police work and that Shabazz was never connected to any guns or vehicles in the case. The GBI uh, matched the DNA on these as early as 2006. Nothing was done at that time. Between that time, a lot of things have, have happened. Witnesses have died. Um, evidence has become stale. There's a lot of issues that we're going to find with, these, um, with this case here. <laughs> The rape kit linking Shabazz was never tested. Officials say lack of funding was one reason. It wasn't until Georgia received nearly $2 million from the Manhattan DA to clear backlogs that the state was able to then intervene. A former Gwinnett County police officer on trial for excessive force took the stand to testify today. Robert McDonnell is charged with violating his oath as an officer and assaulting a man during a traffic stop. Joe Hankey has the story from the courthouse in Gwinnett County where the defense rested its case against McDonald's testimony. In his testimony today, uh, former officer Robert McDonald said when he drove to the intersection in question, he received word that his sergeant was in a fight with a driver when he then ran up on that intersection. He says he did not see that the driver was already handcuffed. He only had a few seconds to react, and he did not intend, he says, to kick that man in the face. Moments before Robert McDonald arrived, then Gwinnett County Police Sergeant Michael Bongiovanni pulled over a driver named Demetrius Hollins. Cell phone video shows Bongiovanni pulling Hollins out of his car and then hitting him in the face. As it relates to that, I heard my sergeant yell he was in a fight over the radio, so hearing he's in a fight over the radio, that probably means somebody's going to get arrested. Bon Giovanni took a plea deal to avoid prison time in this case in exchange for his testimony. Cell phone video shows McDonald then arriving with Hollins on the ground. McDonald says as he ran up with his gun drawn but finger off the trigger, he noticed Hollins on his side and looking back. It was, I was going to run up and use my foot to push his shoulder back down on the ground because I still had my weapon in my hand, not knowing if there's other people in the car, if he had a weapon. I don't know what's going on at this point. At this point, McDonald says he missed Hollins' shoulder. And as I was bringing my foot down, he moved, and my foot missed his shoulder and hit him right here on the side of the cheek. At that point, he rolled down the ground, and I looked and saw he was, was indeed handcuffed. McDonald said using his hands to hold down Hollins instead was not an option. I considered it, but considering the fact that I had my pistol in my hands, I didn't want to, at that time, have, possibly have him reach up and grab my gun. McDonald testified he did not press his gun to Holland's head, but he held the gun near it because they were at close range and next to a busy intersection. Um, if, God forbid, you do have to take a shot, the bullet's going straight down. It's not going to hit my sergeant or an innocent motorist two cars over. Um, you know where it's going to go. The state, though, questioned McDonald's use of force by pulling his gun and not asking if the man was handcuffed or resisting as he ran up. When you come up, did you think Sergeant Bon Giovanni was in a life or death situation? I didn't know. When asked by the state, McDonald said he did not see Hollins actively fighting when he arrived and ran up with his gun drawn, but was rolling onto his side. McDonald also said at some point the gun did touch Hollins' head. We expect to hear closing arguments from attorneys in this case tomorrow morning. 
before the jury begins its deliberation. 11 Alive covering this trial on air and online. Be sure to download the 11 Alive app for the full testimony and any updates in the trial. It was the case that outraged thousands online. Next, an attorney's plea for a new trial for the man sentenced for killing his two-week-old daughter. <laughs> We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. right, right. about that. Well, reward would be... Slimming down. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. New at 10, a longtime police lieutenant and Army veteran severely injured after an accident in his home last week. Lieutenant Bruce Showalter fell on a ladder, hitting his head, leading to traumatic brain injury. Hope Ford talked to his daughter and his boss about the new fight to save his life. He is, uh, sorry, I get emotional talking about it. Loganville uh, Assistant Chief Dick Lowry choked up man, talking about man. his lieutenant and friend. When the call goes out and it's one of our own, everybody's going. And it's uh, when you've known Bruce as long as I have, of course, it's shocking. Lieutenant Bruce Showalter hit his head after falling off a ladder the day before Valentine's. His daughter, Brittany DeGiebert, saw her father seconds after the fall. And then my mom was like screaming and I thought like, like maybe something happened to Clara, my daughter. And she was like, dad fell off the ladder. Showalter's been in Gwinnett County ICU ever since. The 54-year-old Army veteran's been with Loganville Police for 15 years. Those that love him say he's a stress-free, easygoing man who's heavily involved in his community. Every year we do a, a 5K run to raise money for Special Olympics. He's always involved with that. He prioritized family time, especially with his favorite person, his granddaughter, Clara. Watch this, Connor. Intense rehab is up next. His daughter called his fall ironic, considering how dangerous his everyday life is. When he's home, we always thought he was safe. It just reminds you of like how precious time is. A local attorney has filed a request to appeal the murder conviction of Christopher McNabb. McNabb was sentenced to life in prison last year for murdering his two week old daughter. A jury convicted McNabb and Courtney Bell in the death of their daughter, Kalia. The couple reported the child missing in 2017. They claimed they woke up and she was gone. Her body was later found near the trailer park where the family lived. Prosecutors argue McNabb was a negligent father and the family's drug use played a role. Now, his attorney argues lack of evidence proves McNabb's conviction was unjustified. We're going to argue to the court that it was not relevant to the question of did Mr. McNabb cause the death of the child, as well as addressing the issue of there being no direct evidence showing that Mr. McNabb caused the death of the child. At this point, the prosecution has not filed a response. If they approve, the judge will set a date for the hearing.
Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb taking a look at the latest models, and they're not Sports Illustrated. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Maybe like a running you through know, the that's rain. A, that's an old line, and I'm sorry that I trotted that out. Anyway. It's, it's okay, Jeff. I know how to roll with you. Maybe a thing like running through the rain, Chris. That's the only scene they're getting around here. Yeah, that's exactly right. Some uh, wet models out there tonight as we see that <laughs> rain that is heavier on the south side at this hour, and that heavier rain continues to push down to the south. We're beginning to see some breaks over North Georgia. The rain's not over. It's not going to be over, but at least it's tapering off a little bit over parts of North Georgia with some more holes in this rain shield. Let me take you down on the south side first. This is where we're seeing more of that moderate and heavy rain still falling uh, from LaGrange through Meriwether County, uh, Upson County, Pike, Lamar County, Spalding, Henry County getting that moderate rain stretching into Butts County, Putnam County, even Morgan County here along I-20 and southward is where we see that heavier rain and it continues to move down to the south. So things will start improving on the south side in a little bit. Here closer to town, you can see some of these holes over North Fulton County, Northern Cobb, Cherokee, Forsyth County, also into parts of Dawson County where it's not actively raining, but then there's light rain to the north. That all still has to move in as well as more of this moisture coming in from Alabama. So the rain's not over. It's just not as heavy as it was earlier, and I don't expect to see any additional heavy rain overnight, just mainly light rain. I think that band of heavier rain with that thunder and lightning with it will be more down to the south, but we still have all this that's going to move in. So light stuff during the overnight hours before things start tapering off uh, for early in the morning. Here's what we're watching out there right now. This is a live look from our tower cam in Coweta County. That's still where we have that good rain shield that's moving through now. Here's that uh, street light right there. See those raindrops that are still coming down. We also see some of that rain that's still kind of piling up there on the roads as well. And you can see those splatters there on the street from that rain that's coming through. And uh, this rain has to go somewhere. It can't soak into the ground because it's saturated and this is all running off into a lot of creeks and streams. We have a flash flood watch in effect, even a flash flood warning in effect for all of Troop County down here near LaGrange and then individual flash flood warnings for some creeks and streams in Gwinnett County, North Fulton. That's a big creek up at North Fulton and in Southern Forsyth County, also in Rome. Some rivers there have some flood warnings for them as well as all this water is just adding, uh, adding up and ending up in these creeks and streams. Uh, we've seen already around an inch in some spots. We can see another half inch to maybe an inch in some areas with some locally higher amounts in some areas as well. So tonight I'm really thinking that heavier amount will be on the south side uh, between a half inch and an inch and a half and maybe even some spots over an inch and a half. But here in Atlanta, I think those totals and northward will be less than a half inch for tonight. But then the next wave comes in Wednesday night and into Thursday. That's going to add more rain, potentially a half inch to an inch and a half. And then those higher amounts down on the south side too. Here in Atlanta, we think it's all going to be the liquid variety of precip. But once we get into Wednesday during the overnight hours, we see a lot of this activity moving away and some drier hours for the first part of the day on Wednesday, not raining all day long Wednesday, just scattered stuff. Uh, and then more rain comes in later on Wednesday night, especially overnight into Thursday. So we wake up Thursday to rainy conditions here, but in North Georgia with that colder air around, I do think that we'll see some mixing up in parts of North Georgia, but all rain here in Atlanta before all that moisture pulls out and then it gets cold Thursday night and into Friday. Here's a look at some of those snow totals, potentially uh, maybe one to two inches in far North Georgia, parts of Fannin County, Gilmer County, Towns Union and Raven counties. Uh, but for Atlanta, it's a cold rain. Now we'll also have to watch Friday morning. Any moisture that does dry up early on Friday morning as temperatures will be close to freezing. We might see some individual spots of some black ice around. We don't think it's going to be widespread, but just maybe some slick spots Friday morning. Then we're up to 48 with more sunshine. Saturday looks good. Sunday, a few more clouds and then uh, rain returning Monday with temperatures back into the 60s. Take a look at our wow weather moment. This is from Mike Sussman in Dawson County. Uh, this is when it was not raining. This, this picture was not taken today. It was earlier over the weekend where we uh, saw high water levels there at Lake Lanier. Uh, Mike said this is War Hill Park in Dawsonville. The water in some places are really high, even covering up some of those uh, decks and uh, uh, marinas out there as well and those uh, docks that go to them. We'd love to see your weather wow moment. Um, just go to our, our uh, we'd love for you to become a member of our 11 Alive Storm Trackers page on Facebook. Search 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Ask to become a member of the group. We'll accept you and you can be a part of this exclusive local weather community.
PETA is honoring the five year old boy who saved his family, including their dog from a massive house fire. Noah Woods was granted the Hero to Animals Award. He was celebrated after saving his family from a house fire in Bartow County. Noah was the first one to wake up. He grabbed his sister and the family dog. They climbed out of a window and got to safety. He also alerted other family members, allowing them time to escape as well. Peter released a statement saying the face of a fire. Noah stayed calm and ensured the safety of his family, including his dog. They hope his kindness will inspire people to remember their animal companions during emergencies. I'm Francesca Emmerker with the A Scene. How would you like to spend time with your family and work with director extraordinaire Ava DuBernay? Well, I've got the details for you to do that. It's coming up in the A Scene. Living alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. okay, right, right. About I mean, that. Well, reward would be. Slimming, Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you well, know, I even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody's learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. <laughs> News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for a Tuesday's edition of the A Scene. And I have a casting call for all my families out there who want a little taste of the spotlight. How about Ava DuBernay, whose directing credits include Selma, Greenleaf, and Cherish the Day, is now casting for a new project called DMZ for HBO Max. Ooh. Now, the Southern Casting Call reports CL Casting is looking for families with at least two kids or more to work on cameras for the upcoming show. Now, production takes place over the weekend of February 29th and March 1st. Now, DMZ will star my girl Rosario Dawson and is based on a 2005 Vertigo comic book with the same title, according to The Hollywood Reporter. And the series is about Manhattan becoming divided following a civil war. Dawson is actually announced to appear as a character called Alma, a fierce medic who saves lives while desperately searching for her lost son. It's going to be good. All the details for casting are on our 11alive.com slash the ACN page. And finally, our ACN producer, Ryan Dennis, he's trying something different on our ACN Twitter feed with two separate productions centering around the life of Aretha Franklin, both recently filmed right here, here in Georgia. Now we're asking, which performance are you looking forward to the most? Is it this one, the MGM biopic starring Jennifer Hudson out October 9th? This is an actual film going out in theaters. Or are you looking forward to this Nat Geo docuseries starring Cynthia Erivo coming out May 25th. Let us know by voting 
right now on our AC Twitter page. All right, thanks, Fran. I'm headed out to get ready for Uplate. Coming up in about 35 minutes over on 11 Alive, join the team. We'll be there with more, more news and weather updates for you. Thank you, Aisha. We appreciate it. Coming up, we have a lot to talk about here on the Big 36, where news is king. With Georgia's budget cuts hung up in the legislature, it's not clear where the state will get money for a $2,000 teacher pay raise, but a new poll shows taxpayers are willing to pitch in. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm gonna give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say you won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 will take to the stage to face off, and he will have to address some past controversies when he was the mayor of New York City. Alice Barr with NBC is in Washington for the very latest. Former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, a familiar face in the race to the White House thanks to hundreds of millions in ad spending, will finally bring his voice to the debate stage in Nevada tomorrow night, though his rivals are already trying to drown him out. Anybody here worth $60 billion, you can run for president. And you can buy the airwaves. 
Bloomberg entered the race so late he won't appear on the Nevada ballot, but he qualified for the debate after earning double digits in new polls out today. One puts him second only to Bernie Sanders on the national level, while another has the pair tied for the lead in Virginia, which votes on Super Tuesday in March, the first time Bloomberg will be on the ballot. The other candidates hitting him for his stop and frisk policing policy that targeted communities of color during his time as New York mayor. But he can't, in fact, wipe away his record. I know I can't change history, but what I can do is learn from my mistakes. A shifting field, all trying to make a mark in Nevada, where lines are long as early voting wraps up today. I want to beat Donald Trump, and I need your help to do it. Thank you. President Trump heading west today, too, visiting four states in four days to counter the Democratic contest and foreshadow the true fight ahead. Facing more than a billion dollars in settlements with thousands of sex crime victims, the Boy Scouts of America has announced it will file for bankruptcy, but that does not mean that the organization is going away. The move will allow it to pay out settlements without fighting each one of those cases. It impacts dozens of survivors in Atlanta. Caitlin Ross spoke to an attorney representing many of them. It is a lifetime of suffering. Attorney Darren Penn has been working with alleged victims of Boy Scouts of America's sexual abuse for years. Their cases had been argued and were moving forward in local civil courts when late this afternoon they were all removed. Think about all of the survivors in the state of Georgia that now have to actually go to Delaware if they want to seek any kind of redress. Go to Delaware because that's where the Boy Scouts of America filed for bankruptcy. He says if the victims want compensation, they'll have to all fight the case there. I think it's a sad day for, for all survivors of this kind of abuse. The Boy Scouts of Atlanta is a separate organization, and in a statement told 11 Alive, the Atlanta Area Council has not filed for bankruptcy. Meetings and activities, district and council events, other scouting adventures, and countless service projects are taking place as usual. In short, there should be no change to the local scouting experience. They've taken proactive steps to protect scouts, including always having too deep leadership, prohibiting one-on-one -on -one contact, always having separate sleeping and bathing arrangements, and sticking to strict media guidelines. Penn says the organization as a whole has taken a lot of steps to protect kids now, but says it should still be held accountable for any abuse that happened on its watch. The Boy Scouts of America is a... Safety will be a top concern during the upcoming men's basketball Final Four. Multiple public agencies were involved in a preparedness exercise inside the Georgia World Congress Center. They discussed ways officials can work together in the event of a public emergency. The Final Four will tip off April 4th inside Mercedes-Benz Stadium, and the championship game is two days later. Fulton County is ensuring there are no mistakes when you head to the polls for next month's presidential primary. Today, the county hosted a mock election. Members of the community were able to test the new voting machines. It starts with a familiar touch screen, but now voters must take a paper ballot and drop it in a scanner. That is the only way that your vote will be counted. Georgia's presidential primary, March 24th, the last day to register this coming Monday. Early voting in Fulton County, March 2nd to March 20th. The coronavirus outbreak continues to be a worldwide health emergency here in the United States. Uh, some Americans have received some good news. They can finally go home. Here's Jennifer Bellamy. 160 Americans who arrived back in the United States after being evacuated from China are no longer quarantined for their potential exposure to coronavirus. Buses full of Americans left two military bases in California. They were aboard the first of the two planes evacuated from the center of the outbreak in Wuhan, China. Another group of Americans is also expected to be released from quarantine on Thursday. In China, the virus continues to take its toll. Over the past 24 hours, there have been more than 1,800 new confirmed cases, bringing the total to right around 73,000. So far, more than 1,800 people have died. China's foreign ministry says the government is making an all-out effort to counter the outbreak. Now, the coronavirus isn't just impacting people's health. The pain is now being felt in un an unlikely industry. We're talking about weddings here. Many bridal designers operate out of China, and due to ongoing quarantine, some factories have been forced to shut down. That means big shipping delays. Some designers saying they won't be able to ship out dresses until the middle of the summer. It's an extra layer of stress nobody could have expected. I do have dresses that are out there waiting to be fulfilled, so I'm, I'm nervous about being sure that my gowns will be able to get here in time. 
this is a bride's wedding day. And if they fell in love with a dress, you don't want to be that person to say, I'm sorry. You know, we can't get that for you. So I just very cautious. Well, the good news here, most of the factories are expected to open soon if they haven't already, but we could be feeling the impacts for months to come. So if you are ordering something special, it might be smart to do some research and have a backup plan in place. And remember, we're keeping you updated on all things related to the coronavirus outbreak. You can download the 11 Alive app to find out more about the symptoms and confirmed cases in the United States. State lawmakers appear poised to restore many of the budget cuts proposed by Governor Brian Kemp. The cuts became necessary after lawmakers cut taxes two years ago and state revenues fell short. Lawmakers returned today after a week and a half hiatus to cut deals. Doug Richards has more for us tonight. Governor Kemp's proposed budget cuts met some pretty quick resistance here at the Capitol. Now, House leaders have restored many of those budget cuts, at least for now. The GBI Crime Lab is among the state services that Kemp proposed for cuts and that lawmakers resisted. The governor's budget calls for cuts of more than one and a half million dollars at the crime lab, cutting positions for scientists and lab techs this year, and even more cuts for those positions next year. The House Appropriations Committee restored many of those cuts, as well as cuts in programs like substance abuse treatment programs, mental health programs, and accountability courts. Looking at it and realizing that the cuts that were proposed there to the accountability courts are uh, funds that were ongoing, things that they're already doing, and so those funds need to be replaced. You took, you know, sort of two and a half million bucks out of mental health, and you gave two and a half million dollars to private prisons. Like, how does that work, right? So even though you're saying, hey, we're going to help, in reality, you're moving this stuff into a place that ultimately hurts people. Lawmakers said they found other cuts in the budget to compensate for the cuts that they restored, the details of which are emerging and will likely get a vote in the full House Wednesday. We've got the busiest airport in the world. You've heard that before. You've heard that over and over if you've lived here for any period of time. And if you've traveled through Hartsfield-Jackson, you probably have been welcomed aboard the plane train, but who is behind that beautiful voice that you hear while riding? Here's Liza Lucas. Every day, over 250,000 excited, exhausted, and even on edge travelers rely on this voice. Welcome aboard the plane train. To guide them to their gates. The next stop is for tea gates. And the woman tea behind tea that reassuring go. voice, Atlanta resident Sharon Feingold. It's so, it's sorry. Sorry. I'm like, when I hear the voice, I'm like, I can't, <laughs> I can't focus. I know, but I'm like, it's, the next stop <laughs> it's like hearing like an echo of your own voice. Believe it or not, the journey to becoming voice of the plane train all started on an airplane. I happened to be on an airplane and was reading and there was a whole article about this whole infrastructure down here and there was the name of a, a guy. I thought well let me just reach out to him and just see if he has any plans to do anything with the boys. And of course Sharon wanted to make sure her plane train announcements were anything but plain. This is a driverless train. People want to feel confident in technology. And so I felt like splitting the difference between a real person and having a little bit of a robot edge was the kind of right combination. No way. That it takes a second, right, for people to make the connection. Welcome aboard the plane train. How often have you heard this lady before? Oh, I hear her every day. Every day? Every day for the last two years. Well, I have to introduce you over here. This, this is her right here. Whether or not riders made the connection between Sharon's voice and the plane train is up in the air. But the role is nevertheless a special one for Sharon. What's your name? Del Reese. The next stop is Concourse D. D is in Del Reese. And before we wrapped up our own ride on the plane train, we had to put the voice of the train to the test with an 11 Alive WXIA TV sign off. The next stop is Concourse W. W as in WXIA. Please hold on. This train is departing. Man, oh man, that is a voice. That voice is money, as they say. <laughs> Up next, she went to get her driver's license and walked out empty-handed. The question she never expected to be asked. Chris? As if we haven't had enough of it already, we have more rain rolling through. Heaviest activity is on the south side right now, but more rain will be coming in overnight. I'll let you know when we'll get a break and when we'll see more moisture that can mix in with cold air and even spread snow over parts of North Georgia. The latest models coming up. We've heard from the Astros owner this week, didn't think it was a really big deal. The dude is clueless. 
Now we're going to talk to a veterans pl Braves player. He's got his own view of the Astros. That's coming up next. Channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right. About that. Well, reward would be slimming, slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crock Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibes. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They <laughs> are fun. And they're they're convenient. Fun. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't. A naturalized U.S. citizen says she should have been able to get a driver's license, but she walked out empty-handed from the Department of Driver Services in Norcross. Elvin Lopez spoke to her today and says that she was told her immigration status could not be verified. It's a process. Just a few boxes left to unpack. Lindsay Matea and her husband moved from Virginia to Dunwoody just a week ago. One of the first things they did was apply for a Georgia driver's license in Norcross. I had actually brought every single government issued piece of paper that I own. I had my photo taken. I took the eye exam. So I, I had assumed that everything was going really well and that I'd be walking out with a driver's license. But Lindsay says only her husband walked out with one. The guy behind the counter made copies of all of my documentation and he handed them back to me. He said, um, your immigration status cannot be verified today. I mean, this is my home to me and it, I don't um, think of this country as anything but home. So um, to be treated as though I don't belong here. It was quite shocking. 
Lindsay says she provided all documents required by Georgia DDS, including proof of residency, her Virginia driver's license, her original certificate of naturalization from when she was seven, and her social security card. I've just grown up my whole life thinking of myself as, as every other American in this country and thinking of myself as no different. And so then to have that part questioned really cut me very deeply. DDS says it uses a federal USCIS database to verify immigration documents, and that includes certificates of naturalization, which the agency says can take several days to process. We've added their statement on 11alive.com. We'll continue to follow this. Elwin will have the very latest on this case as soon as we learn more. We're still watching some of the rain that is out there tonight. The heaviest activity has moved down to the south so far. Uh, we'll take you down there right now. So you can see the moderate to heavy rain uh, that continues to push down to the south. Now that heaviest activity is over Pike and Lamar County, Upson County. It's moved through Merriweather County. It's over toward Monroe County. Butts County still getting some of that moderate rain. And then beginning to let up a little bit as you go to the north into Henry County. And then here in the Atlanta area, still light rain here, but we're seeing some breaks on the north side. It's not ending, but it's not, just not as heavy as it was a little bit earlier when we saw that heavier rain come through Atlanta. Now it is pushing down toward the south. You see that right there, but still watching more of this moisture that's feeding in from Alabama. And take a look at some of these rain totals. Our Doppler radar can estimate how much rain has fallen. And you can see here up in the Rome area about uh, 2.1 inches right there on the Floyd and Bartow County line. And then as you go over a little bit more to North Fulton County, we see some of those totals there a little bit more than two inches. And then in Atlanta itself, inside the perimeter, we're seeing generally those rain totals that are around an inch. And then higher amounts here on the south side. Look at this. Uh, in some spots down here in parts of Heard County and Troop County, we're talking about estimates of four and a half inches by our Doppler radar. Other uh, totals that are pretty high there between two and three inches uh, through parts of Pike and uh, Lamar County, Spalding County as well, and then over in Henry County, just under two inches of rain. So that's still pretty significant rainfall here. And then that continues, that heavier rain continues to move down to the south, but we're still not finished. We have more of this light rain that'll keep feeding in tonight. Here's a live look in Athens where you can see uh, the roads are wet. We still are dealing with just a few lighter showers over in the Athens area right now. We still have this flash flood watch in effect until Wednesday. Uh, in the evening hours covering much of Metro, really all of Metro Atlanta, much of North Georgia that goes over to Athens, east of Athens, east of the uh, Lake Oconee area and down to the south. In fact, we have that where we showed you those rain totals uh, between four and five inches on, from our Doppler estimates. We have a flood warning in effect for the, all of Troop County, a flash flood warning in effect. So we expect to see another maybe half inch to an inch overnight and some locally higher amounts as that lighter rain continues to feed through. There, there goes that heavier activity overnight. And in the morning, uh, the roads are still going to be wet when you're driving in. We're going to have cloudy skies but we don't see a lot of active rain falling in the morning hours and we'll see some dry hours tomorrow, but still with cloudy skies around, it's just going to feel damp out there. And then later in the day, we'll begin to see some showers redeveloping late on Wednesday and into Thursday. And on Thursday, that's where things get a little bit tricky. It's going to be rain here in Atlanta, but then in Northeast Georgia, as that meets up with some colder air at the surface there, we may see some winter mix and some accumulations over far North Georgia before all this moisture begins to pull out. We do have to watch here in Atlanta on Friday morning any moisture that doesn't dry up as temperatures get close to the freezing mark and then some spots below freezing. We'll have to watch for some black ice to develop. Saturday looks great. It'll be mostly sunny up to 54 in the afternoon. A few more clouds Sunday. Rain chances back on Monday and then tapering off again on Tuesday with highs in the 60s. So the news on NASCAR driver Ryan Newman is Somewhat simplistic today that he is alert, talking to family. That's good news. His team, Roush Fenway Racing, released a statement saying that he's awake, also speaking with doctors, but it's been a little more than 24 hours since that crash on the last lap of the Daytona 500. We haven't heard any more information than that. That's, that's essentially all we have right now. He was taken to the Halifax Hospital in Daytona Beach, and that is where he is tonight. The race team also thanked fans for their concern and heartfelt messages of support as they framed it, but still great concerns about what are his injuries, how serious, how severe, 
What's the prognosis? We simply don't have any of that. We haven't a clue. We haven't heard any of that. Okay. Braves outfielder Nick Markakis is not ready to forgive and forget the Houston Astros for the sign stealing scandal. I mean, this is a hard old line player, man. He, he is not fool around. He is a tough guy who takes the sport very seriously. Standing in front of his spring training locker today, he let it go. I feel like every single guy over there needs a beating. You know, what they did was bull****. Um, you know, they took a lot of uh, opportunities away from people and, uh, you know, possibly ruin people's careers. And, uh, you know, like I said, we're all competitive in this and, you know, we want to compete and win. But when you take it to that level, I mean, there's no excuse. It's, uh, like I said, bull****. And, you know, they should... Uh, they should have some uh, ramification on what they did. All right, so here's the first time we've really heard some truth. The commissioner needs to play that soundbite over and over and over. And, and, and you know, I, I just think that Major League Baseball needs to stand taller on this, but that's my own take. Uh, there is other news from Northport, Florida, on this first full day of full team workouts. And one of the Braves' young stars to watch is from right here in Metro Atlanta. Here's Alex Glaze. Drew Waters is one of the Braves' homegrown prospects. He went to Etowah High School, graduated in 2017. Last year, made it to Gwinnett, and this year, Waters has even bigger plans. My end goal is to finish in Truist Park and help the Atlanta Braves win a World Series. But um, This year? Yeah, this year. What were the, some of the things that you were working on to take your game to that, that next level to get you at Truist Park? You know, I... Um, Every year, I, at the end of the year, I evaluate kind of what I did really well and what I need to work on. And um, it was good. I got the opportunity to play in AAA last year. Um, I didn't have as much success as I would have liked, but um, I really valued my time there just because it allowed me to really like learn what I needed to work on and what I needed to do to not only compete with those guys at the AAA level, but to also um, make an impact at the big league level. Being a hometown guy, what kind of unique pressures kind of come along with with that? I mean, um, when you make one, when you make your debut, um, it's not going to be like everybody else's. Um, just playing, more special. Yeah, playing in AAA. I would show out uh, in the game and there would be 100 people there after the game at a triple-A game. So the thought of me making my big league debut so close to home, I'm excited to not only have my family and my support system there, but also be able to play in front of my friends and some of the people I grew up in front of. Now the Braves have a lot of young, talented outfielders, so making it to the big leagues won't be easy. So Drew has a couple of more immediate goals, and one of them is to be more consistent at the plate, and that's something that he will continue to work on as spring training continues. Nice job, Alex and Maria. Great from spring training. Something to plan for in the year and a half ahead. Georgia and Clemson open the football season in a game in Charlotte. It will take place on Saturday, September 4th. Make your hotel reservations this week. <laughs> it's going to happen at Bank of America Stadium, home of the Panthers. So that is sports. We'll take a break. We're back to close things up right after this. They have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. 
Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt we're going to be watching those rain chances that will be here with us uh, tomorrow but we will have some dry hours. It's not going to be raining all day tomorrow. Just kind of hit and miss lighter showers around temperatures around 57. More rain coming in on Thursday. All the liquid variety of precip here, but maybe a winter mix up in far north Georgia. Drying out on Friday, also cooling off. Saturday looks good before the rain chances come back. Monday with temperatures back to the 60s. Saturday a 10. Look at that. We're loving that. Waiting for the weekend. We are. I wait for every weekend. <laughs> we I, I don't do. care if it's raining or something. <laughs> have, have a good one, everybody. Just order some Chinese food, and of course you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, I've got like the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, right, right. I mean, that? Reward would be 
slimming, slimming down. Okay, yes. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, well, even more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some